I don't know how with it. I was trying I was to trying show you guys, you guys smoke, 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 but but just, just have to take my word, word for it. For it. Smoke, smoke poured out, out, out of the left front motor. We'll talk about that in a second. Friends, pilots, countrymen, lend me your ear balls and eyeballs. For the next two hours, we shall hang out. My name is Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. You can call me whatever the fuck you want. I almost just knocked this beer over. What's up, What's up, everybody? You guys, you guys oh, oh, there's the smoke. smoke. Oh, 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 hold, hold on, on, hold on, hold on. Here's the, here's smoke. the smoke. Hold on, hold up. Hold, hold up. up. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, God, oh, God missed it. Paused it. Paused it. Here you guys, here you guys go. go. Here you guys, here guys go. go. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Ooh, oh, oh, echo. echo. All right, let me fix, fix the, the echo. echo. Why did Why this, do this do this? All right, now, all right, now we're good. You know what? Let, let me delete, delete this, this mic completely. completely. Do you guys, do you guys see, see the smoke? The smoke? Yeah. yeah. That, that smoke, smoke was getting, getting a, motor a motor so hot, hot that, that it, it demagnetized, demagnetized the... the um, um, why is it still echoing? echoing? I, killed I killed the... the uh, hold up. Hold up. Oh, oh, web webcam audio. Whoops. That'll be better. I wonder what I just deleted from this source. Oh, well. Um, so, yeah, that smoke was getting the left front T-Motor F40 Pro 2 so hot, and it smoked a bunch, that um, it literally demagnetized the Magnetson thing. Is it still echoing? No, it's not. Okay, you guys are delayed. Yeah, so, like, when I take... Here, let me show you. This is, um, this is incredible. I'm, I'm... I'm so excited about this because I've, uh, I didn't even think you could do this, to be honest. It's a little dark, too. Let's get a little more brightness here. Yeah, there we go. Um, check this out. I think this is the, the bell. You guys know how they, like, slam down, right, when you put a, a bell onto a stator? Watch this. Come on. <laughs> like, it's... Like, look at it. It doesn't... Oh, you guys can't see shit. How can I show you guys? It's kind of rough going in there, but... I don't know. There it is. There it is. See how it just, like, falls in there? It's completely demagnified. <laughs> Dusty Nuts misses the echo. <laughs> you guys are like, uh... Stockholm Syndrome patients. <laughs> right, no. Yeah, it's Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> Alright, guys. Enough of that nonsense. Let's dive into it. My name's Aaron Ciotti. I am Ciotti FPV all over the effing place. Uh, here on YouTube, Patreon, Instagram, Facebook. Look me up. Uh, Tiago, you missed three seconds of me screwing up. Uh, so, you know, business as usual. Look me up, ask me questions, hang out, and uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Oh, I forgot to mention, the ESC was totally fine. Uh, Akon AK30, AK32, 35 amp ESC, which will be coming up in the five inch giveaway soon. Uh, totally fine, completely fine. And um, yeah, that was actually this rig right here, come to think of it. Uh, it, it. It actually, believe it or not, it blew up the flight controller. It blew up the five volt regulator on the flight controller. So if we have time tonight, I'm gonna show you guys how to fix a flight controller that has had the five volt regulator blown up. Um, yeah, I'm gonna use the same flight controller. This is the ESC, it's totally fine. Everything is good to go. Mad respect to Akon for making the best ESCs in the business. 
in my humble opinion. All right, so I got some notes now. I'm getting organized in 2020, guys. We got some notes going. I'm not going to miss stuff. I'm going to be organized. Uh, the notes aren't finished yet, so uh, I'll be adding to them tonight. <laughs> so if I get silent and start typing, you know what's going on. And um, yeah, we'll have a good time. So, um, first item on the notes is to read the chat names. And I already took too much time, and there's a million chat names, so you guys win. And I got some work to do. Because Mongo FPV was the first one up in here asking about the screaming goat. <laughs> Thomas Bird, Engage FPV, William Barlow, Pauly Lie FPV, Chad Bochneck, Wind of Fire IO, Mr. Sprinkles, Sean Hales, Engage FPV, Lead Sled, MB FPV, Paul Beach, Adamus Prime. Cement Kid in the house. Cement Kid and I were hanging out in uh, Discord last night, talking some smack on the rest of you guys. No, troubleshooting stuff, hanging out. Uh, Discord link down below. What else do we got? Athix is in the house. Michael Backstrom, Daniel Sarmiento, Mars FPV, Sasha is here, Stevo43068, Lead Sled again, D Brown, Pauly FPV, oh, Pauly Lee. Is it Pauly Lai or Pauly Lee? It's probably Pauly Lee FPV. Um, IMAX is in the house. IMAX, thank you for such wonderful theater technology. I have a I have a Discord. You can you can join up. You probably got mad money, right? Making mad money off those IMAX movies. Come on, I'm broke. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Sprinkles again. Jason Peters sticks FPV. The house blog is in the house. House blog is going to be our first moderator up in here so act right or he will smack you down <laughs> shane duggar is here jason peters uh all right we're gonna skip 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 guillermo is in the house guillermo i haven't seen you why how are you man uh engage again paul lee again daniel sarmiento again paul beach again i'll find some fresh ones jason peters is here bluegrass connection is here cement kid again engage thomas daniel thomas Paul Beach, Mr. Sprinkles, Jason Peters, Steve-O again, Josh Feltz calling out the echo, 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 Mr. Sprinkles again, Shane Duggar again, wow, you guys hammered me on the echo, thank you, uh, Take a Flight FPV, Dan Christie, Bluegrass Connection again, Bluegrass Connection, any any relation to Bluegrass Multirotors? What if, like, FPV names were, were related? If we had to, like, have, I don't know, that's a weird thought. Uh, Athix again, Dan Christie is here, Mr. Sprinkles, MBFPV, Take a Flight FPV, Brian Menard, oh, I can't even take a big breath because i got to skip so many repeats, uh, Paul Beach, Guillermo again, Cement Kid, Dan Christie, D. Brown, Sean Hales, Dusty Nuts for sale, the dustiest of nuts and they're for sale, go get you some Dusty Nuts, Ciotti, Team Ciotti people, Brian Maynard, Menard, Maynard, Menardo, Whatever. Um, looks like all... Ooh, Wicked Sticks. There's a fresh one. Oh, come on, YouTube. Uh, Tiago is in the house. Take a flight again. The Dustiest Nuts posts again. Every time Dusty Nuts posts, I'm just going to call it out. I'm just going to scream his name out from the effing rafters. Uh, I think... Max FPV. There's a new one. Wicked Sticks. I think I called you already, but you get a double... Paul Beach in the house. Electric Vulture. That's a cool one. The the most electric of vultures. Asking about Acrobat 1508. iFlight mode. 1508? Really? No, 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 no. 1507. You mistyped it. Uh, which props? Uh, the T-Motor props electric. The the T-Motor uh, 3140 props are the shit. They are so durable. Um, they might be too much power. If they're too much power, uh, my only other 3-inch prop that I dig is the... Um, Gem Fan Wind Dancer 3028, uh, which are relatively fragile. BNHO B Commando 85, Stevo 43068. I just love, I love the, I love calling the numbers out just to, just to f with Stevo. Corey Schroed, Schroedter, yeah, Corey Schroedter. Double uh, A is here. Another moderator in the house. You better ask somebody. Night Train FPV is here. Oliver Bodwell, Raphael Sep Sepulveda, IMAX again, 
Paul Beach, Guillermo, Plasma Trout, ooh, Plasma Trout, ooh, Plasma Trouts with Laser Beams, son. Mars FPV again, Burger Quads, <laughs> Burger Quads, <laughs> Burger Quads, I want to see a Burger Quad, man. I want to see, like, uh, the, I actually really like the, the, the Burger King, uh, uniforms now. They have, like, the different layers of the, of the Whopper. I better see a Burger Quad with the, with those layers, man. We gotta see that Burger Whopper Quad. Get it, get it going, brother. GW FPV, I'll, I'll make you a deal, Burger Quads. If you make one of those, I'll, I'll put it all over the stream. I'll send people to your YouTube. I don't care. I'll, I'll blow your shit up. You'll get the Ciotti bump, which is nothing like the Bardwell bump, but, you know, it's something. GW FPV, Griffin FPV, Metal Mick, Fung Ho, Night Train, Mark Emerson, coming to the end here, Jason Peters, Oliver Bodwell, Mark Emerson again, Steve-O, Dan Christie, and Burger Quads FPV. He's working on it. We are going to benefit from that. Um, in the chat, you guys need to tag me so that it shows up in orange for me to see uh, questions. Now that there's so many of you awesome people, um, I miss most of the comments. So let me show you over here. Right monitor, zoom mic. So here's my chat window. I got it nice and tall, so I hopefully don't miss. And Dark Sagan, who I didn't call out. You got into the last second, Dark. Good work. Dark Sagan is giving you your example. He tags at C-I-O-T-T-I-F-P-V, and it shows up in orange. The orange posts are the only ones I'm realistically going to see out of the corner of my eye. Or if you do the super chat or sticker stuff, I will obviously see those. Um, yeah, cool. Oh, I got to add that to the list. Uh, read chat names, comma, uh, tag. Oh, no, comma, at tag. Sick. All right, cool. Let's get that chat over here. Get my stupid face blown up big again. Oh, it's a face for radio right there. Uh, all right, what else do I have on my list here? Oh, cool, so a new little segment. Oh, okay, so happy fucking New Year, everybody. 2020, it's the 20s again. The roaring 20s are back. We can uh, we can punch some hippies and do all the things they did in the 20s. Oh, my God, you guys are tagging me like crazy. Uh, what do you think about the ethics flat rat motors, asks Rotten Tomato. Uh, I think that the KV is very, very low. I think that they have a 2 millimeter motor shaft, just like the iFlight 1507s and the T-Motor 1507s. What that means is they're not going to be durable at all. Uh, all of the, all, this new crop of 1507 motors are very obviously ta uh, uh, catered towards Cinewhoops, so they kind of don't have to be strong. Uh, but for us, wanting to fly freestyle with them, don't do it. Uh, it's too heavy of a motor, it's going to push your all-up weight too high, and you're just going to bend uh, those two millimeter bells. Uh, the If you want to see how long a 1507 will last under normal kind of like freestyle flying, uh, go to hit my logo thingy and go to my channel and look three videos back, I want to say. There's a, vi a full edit called Killing a Set of iFlight 1507s in One Day. <laughs> It's about four batteries it took me to break them, and you'll see. I put every single crash into the edit, so you will literally get to see every hit they took, and there's not there's not a big hit in there. There's a bunch of small hits, and you'll also notice that they get more and more jello -y as they take little small hits. Um, yeah. Double A asks, am I getting tagged without the at? I am. How'd you do that? Double A is, uh, is, is blowing my mind over here. Oliver Bodwell with a question. What are your thoughts on Beta FPV 1505, 3600 KVs? So, uh, so, so Oliver, do you, uh, do you mean these? Is this what you're, uh, is this what you're talking about, Oliver? Wait, let me get the, uh. My window is all screwed up here. Look at that, boys and girls. That. So uh, all the Patreon folks, they got to see these the day that they came in. Uh, we'll talk more about Patreon in a minute. Uh, but these, these might be the ones, guys. So currently, uh, the ideal, in my opinion, uh, motor for a 200-ish gram 3-inch rig 
200 grams being a really good number uh, where you can build something that's very durable, uh, but that's not so fat and kind of dropping out of the sky. Essentially what happens is, um, if you want to learn more about prop loading, uh, there's a the Wikipedia article, not article, but page or whatever. Uh, yeah, I know it's blurry. I'll, I'll focus on it in a minute. Uh, there's lots of info on Wikipedia about prop loading. Kebab has a couple videos. My nice and simple approach to it is it's a parachute. You fling your quad up in the air, you go zero throttle, all four propellers are gonna keep spinning with air mode on. So they're disrupting the air. They're a big parachute. The heavier the quad is with three inch props as an umbrella, the faster it's gonna to drop to the ground. Toothpicks float like crazy because they've got three inch props now and they weigh 100 grams. Um, so 200 grams is kind of in between. It's in between a toothpick and a uh, fat crow brat. You know, now that we're building acrobrats with bigger motors, they're creeping up to like 260, 270, 280 grams. Um, 200 grams, you will not get a clean, dirty system, but you can have something that's more durable. Uh, New Year's resolution for Aaron Ciotti. By February 28th or 29th, I will have a signature freestyle frame that hopefully looks a lot like this. Uh, my buddy Brad McManus, uh, Brad McManus, McManus FPV, who a lot of you guys know, um, him, myself, and uh, he's got an engineering buddy, Rob, up in New Jersey, are just gonna do it. Uh, most of you guys that have been around for a while know that I've been working on my own frame, three inch, five inch, for a long time, probably about a year and a half. What's up, Noose? You didn't miss a lot. Um, and I've worked on frames with multiple people, three to four different people now, and they, it's just, it's never worked out. Um, either I work with somebody and they have too big of an ego and they won't listen to, to my feedback and they do it their way and then it's a hot mess, or it just kind of takes forever and I just, I kind of can't wait forever. Um, for, you know, whatever the reason may be, it just hasn't worked out. I'm, I'm kind of over it to be totally honest. Um, the, the ripper frame will come out. I don't know when, and I'm tired of telling you guys that. Uh, the, the question I get most is what three inch frame should I run? And I don't know what to tell you guys. They're like, this is it. This is the, I keep saying the acro brat because it's great, but that's a different style. That's a, a heavier rig. Um, I don't have a three inch frame to suggest to you guys that's tough, that protects the camera, that does all the things that I want it to do. Um, that's out there. The, the ones that are out there are just, they're not it. So by the end of February, I'm going to have a, um, frame that pretty much is the end all. Like it'll be the frame that you buy if you want something that's more than 100 grams and less than 260 grams. And if you buy any other frame at that point, you're just silly because I've legitimate, I mean like, and I'm not even shitting, for two and a half years, I've been flying two inch, two and a half inch, three inch frames and building and flying and, and refining and, and all the above. Uh, so what I build is going to have all that, right? It's going to have the, that two and a half years of blood, sweat, and tears poured into it. And I'm very excited. So it's your guys' job to kick me in the ass and just keep bugging me about it. Uh, so yeah, the frame is also going to, so it's going to be removable arm, much like this one. And we are going to make uh, two inch, two and a half inch, three inch, uh, maybe three and a half inch, definitely four inch arms. So, and, and basically the, the center section of this frame is going to be as slim down as possible to carry a camera with full protection, a 20 by 20 stack or 16 by 16 stack and a receiver and a VTX. So essentially at two inches, it's going to be about as light as you're going to get. Oh, thank God. I thought I was just going to be, I don't know. 
Blood, sweat, and nuts. Yeah, blood, sweat, and nuts. Even better. Dusty nuts for sale. Um, yeah, so even at 2-inch, with the 2-inch arms, it will still be like a competitive, realistic weight uh, for you guys. I don't know what I'm going to call it. Uh, just run, just call it like the, the frame. We'll just call it the frame from now on. Cause that's what it's going to be. It's going to be the frame. All the other three inch frames that are, uh, you know, in this weight class, they're just going to, just going to, they're going to go away. Nobody's going to buy them anymore. They're all going to buy this one. Cause it's going to be the shit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that is very exciting. I know it's going to be a lot of work, but it's going to be really, really, really well worth it because there is a very special magic uh, that is coming and with all of the FAA nonsense that's going to be very important uh even if they do so the the way that the the document is written right now is that essentially under 250 it's it's talking about under 250 grams um is not going to be regulated until the future. They, they, they've worded it really strange, and they basically says that they basically say uh, that initially it won't be regulated, but it will be in the future. So these small rigs and like going from 250 down to 200 is going to become really important because essentially it's looking like there's going to be a point where this shit's illegal. So we're going to have to have stuff that's um, really quiet. <laughs> so toothpicks are going to blow up, although toothpicks are going to need to go to a tri-blade prop um, because tri-blades are a lot quieter. And hopefully the frame will uh, be quiet enough for us all not to get thrown in jail forever. So uh, yeah, we'll see. But that is the most important thing uh, that has sort of come out in my FPV world lately. Christmas was fun. My parents got me these awesome glasses. All right, let me do the actual focus thing because these glasses are real cool. Uh, I went, oh boy, knocking over the mic. Hold up. All right. Oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> so, yeah, my parents got me these. That was super cool. Um, Kristen, my... Lovely and beautiful. Oh, I forgot to turn on my little kicker light. Uh, all right. Let's get the focus fixed. Let's turn this kicker on here. There we go. My lovely, talented, beautiful graphic designer wife made me just about the coolest goddamn Christmas present that I've ever received, which is me as Rick, with complete with goggles, her as the um what are, what are we calling your character again the post-apocalyptic yeah, post-apocalyptic summer Kristen and little Harold Potter there complete with his little feeding tube and his little neck from when he was super sick <laughs> uh pre-order Jason I have no idea I I have not even remotely begun to think about how I'm going to retail this thing. Uh, it might literally just be on... Maybe I'll do it on Patreon. Maybe I'll make a... Uh, maybe I'll make a... Um, you don't have to do tiers on Patreon. You can do, like, a, a, like a thing that people can click on and, and buy. So for 10 cents a day, you jump into my Patreon, and then you can buy the frame. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be dope. Uh, we're going to do a lot of things that I've always wished that frame, com frame companies do slash include. Um, there's going to be multiple camera mounting solutions. Uh, it's going to be set up to use different standoff heights. Um, it's going to come with six arms instead of four to encourage you to bash the living hell out of it. Um... I won't give away all the secrets. We'll leave it there. But yeah, it's um, it's going to be cool. I am looking forward to the amount of work that it's going to be, <laughs> to be honest with you guys. Uh, before I forget, speaking of these uh, 1505s, they are very notchy. I am, I'm a little bit worried 
about them. Here, I'll do the uh, the notchiness audio test for you guys. Ready? I can see the meter going up. So, yeah, they're definitely notchy. Uh, what I learned, though, very recently before the ESC blew up is that, so these, these Emacs 1606s, here's the notchiness test. Uh, these Emacs 1606s, which on Betaflight 4 were literally too notchy to, to even run on the stock tune, um, on the RPM filtering, these things are beautiful. So I have a feeling that these, um, these Beta FPVs will be totally fine in terms of getting a solid tune, a locked in tune. Uh, the question becomes, are they so notchy? So when a motor is notchy like this, it's gonna make vibrations. The RPM filters can now deal with those extra vibrations, um, specifically up in the higher uh, uh, frequency ranges. But those filters are only affecting the flight controller. Like they don't make the motors less notchy, right? Like the motors are shaking just as hard, but um, the, the flight controller can handle it and still let you get a good tune. So the problem becomes you're, you've still got a bunch of vibrations that are going into the frame and thus going into the camera. So the question becomes with these guys, will they cause jello? Uh, the, the 1507s that were incredibly smooth were beautiful. I mean, there was no jello at all. Uh, the Emacs 1606s in the two batteries that I got before the stupid ass Hobbywing ESC decided to explode, they, I didn't tune it at all, so it, it could have been tune related, but it wasn't bad, but there did kind of look like there was a little bit of jelloiness going on when I was just going dead straight center stick, which is like the hardest, like th that is the worst scenario. And, and that's when you really see the jello, um, when you just try to run a dead straight path. As soon as you add any set point in, roll, pitch, yaw, anything, you can really no longer see that. So like that's that that's always my test for Jello is I'll just get a good a, a good path up and I'll just pitch it forward 25 degrees or 30 degrees or I'll actually do multiple runs at different pitch uh, at different pitch degrees and just let it sit for like three or four seconds just going dead straight and then if there's any Jello whatsoever you'll see it in the sun you'll see it in the highlights um, so. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. The uh, the 1306s are pretty damn good. The the everybody, all the patrons in here have seen those 1306s with the Tarsier. A uh, little secret video that's up on the Patreon, and I have high hopes for these. I I'm cautiously optimistic. So we'll see. 1505 is is I think this is the size. I really really do. Um, I, I think it's. It's either this 1505 size or uh, it might be 14, uh, 1405. 1405 might be um, a better size or maybe even like 1504. But we'll see. Th these are, if nothing else, a test um, of what the, appro what the correct size motor is for a three inch prop on a 200-ish gram frame. Currently, the Emacs and RCX 1306s are the best match that we've got, but an, uh, a six millimeter tall stator, in my experience, is, unless it's, we're talking about five inch rigs where it's a 22, 23 millimeter wide stator, but on the smaller stators, 12, 13, 14 millimeters, um, a six millimeter tall stator tends to be a little bit too much. That tends to be a little bit more racing oriented. You lose a little bit of uh, throttle resolution. It's not bad, but it just could be better. And I, I really do think that these motors are getting us very, very close to the ideal motor size. Um, to like boil it all down, if you want to think about it like a caveman, think about it this way. This is what a 2306 looks like and a 2207 looks very similar, right? That like, think about the dimensions, right? 23 wide, six tall, or 22 wide, and seven tall, right? So that there's like a ratio between the height and the width. And these motors, as we know, on five inch rigs are perfect. Like they perfectly control the props. They're, they have enough power, they have enough sensitivity, enough resolution, blah, blah, blah. So think about that, right? Think about the shape of that motor, height versus width, and look at these guys.
Same shape, right? Pretty much the same shape. 1606s are starting to get a little bit taller, um, but still, uh, a 1306 is not the same shape. A 1306 is quite a bit taller and quite a bit more narrow. So yeah, that's uh, got me very excited. So I'm gonna get something put together with these motors as soon as I can and see if they're good. Product Spotlight is a new thing that I'm gonna do. We've been doing the Pilot Spotlight, uh, but I wanna do a Product Spotlight on the streams moving forward. So we're gonna do it and we're gonna start tonight um, if you guys have a specific product that you want me to look at real quick, you've got like three minutes because I'm going to blast through this. Oh, what weight? Um, what weight? That's a good question. And I forget the answer. So we will weigh it right now before we get into the product spotlight. I'm going to get a bunch of motors out here for you guys. We'll weigh a bunch. Uh, we'll start off with the 1306. There's what a 1306 looks like. See how much taller it is than, than wide? You know, it's more like a box. All right, so let's see. 1306s, which are the best we've got right now, and this is the Emax 1306. The RCX 1306 is a little bit heavier, um, but it's also a little bit beefier. So a 1306 is 10 and a half grams. This is a Hobbymate 1506, which... It's actually, they call it a 1505 plus, but it's a 1506. Um, this went out of stock on Amazon before I could get three more. So I might be stuck with just this one forever, uh, but whatever. This is 16.3 grams. The Beta FPV 1505 is 13 grams and the 1507s with short wires are 16, 16 grams. So there's a bunch of weight for, weights for you guys to uh, kind of get you in the ballpark. But yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely heavier than 1306s, but if they have, well, they will have more authority, more torque, more instantaneous torque uh, than the 1306s. And I will absolutely take that with a little bit of a weight penalty uh, every day of the week. So we'll see. Let's jump into, oh, Steezy, you beat me to it. That was the first one that I was gonna do. All right, so KO Demon Seed 2208-2550 KV. Let's take a look at them. Now, the uh, they don't talk about it here, but in the bottom of these motors, uh, in the bottom of the stator, basically, they're putting oil in there. Um, when I when I researched this company a little bit, their background is big, giant, um, like almost like the agricultural style motors, like the big uh, motors that everybody's putting on 10 inch rigs and all that kind of stuff. What I think is going on with those big motors on those big rigs is they're just putting so much, um, so many amps through them that they're, they're actually starting to generate a lot of heat. And my assumption is that's why they've begun to put this oil into the center section. Let me see if I have a, uh, a stator. I know most of you guys know what a stator looks like on the inside, but... Uh, for anybody that's new, I don't want to punish you. Well, I have some in here. So this is what the stator looks like. Uh, let's go over here and let's get some focus going on. All right. So that's what the stator of a motor looks like. That's just basically the bottom of the motor. The other piece is the bell. The bell is the top of the motor. Bell goes down over the stator, and fun things happen. So, the stator in here, um, what KO is doing is they've turned this in here into a reservoir that they're putting oil in. So, the oil is going to hang out in there and basically keep 
both, I'm assuming, bearings cool, although they, they really only need to keep the top bearing cool. The top bearing is, is the one that gets the majority of the heat, um, but, I mean, why wouldn't they, they surround both of the bearings in oil? So, you know, this whole center section of the stator is going to be oil-filled, which, like, that's fascinating on one hand, but on the other hand, we don't get these motors hot. Um, in the, the video that I opened with, I was blasting on that left front motor only for that whole time, just turtle mode, turtle mode, turtle mode. And what you also want to understand is it's stuck in a tree, so there's very, there's not much moving air to cool it down. And, um, now you'll love the 13, the, the RCX 1306s, Ben, they're, they're brilliant. Um, and I just barely, well, I mean, I did. I, I got it hot enough to, to screw it up. But the, um, oh, that's interesting, Mongo. That's super interesting. I wonder if that's why they're doing it. Yeah, fluid is, is one of the best dampers um, that you can get. So maybe they're using it to, to kill some of the harmonics. That's super interesting. I only thought about it from a, uh, a heat perspective, but... Very interesting. Well, what I'm getting at is from a heat perspective, I don't think it makes any sense. With a correct tune, our motors aren't getting hot. Um, they get a little hot, like the second that you hammer on a motor, they do generate some heat. They, they, they for sure do. But we're not hammering on the throttle for long periods of time. So I don't know, I unless it is about damping out some vibrations, I don't really see the point. If it is about damping out vibrations, they need to be making a 2306 stat because I want in. Uh, one of the other things I did notice is that like there's a, a hole in the bottom of the stator to add the oil to. And like, I don't know, man, if, if we're flipping and flopping around like we do, is that oil gonna come pouring out of there? I don't know. Very cool, uh, love the innovation that we need. We need as much of that as we can get. I just said as I muted myself. Uh, somebody said they didn't like the design of the top of the bell. I guess because the top lip is is here. This is what's going to hit the ground first. And I, I would want these uh, spokes to be connected to the very top to get the maximum possible strength. Who knows? Uh, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm intrigued. But... I'll wait for version two. I, I I won't jump on to a $27 motor that there's nobody saying, hey, there's nobody that I trust saying this is the greatest thing in the world. Uh, so there's product spotlight number one. Let me look in the chat real quick to see if any of you got, well, let me look for questions real quick too. Uh, looking for orange, looking for orange, looking for orange. Uh, Guillermo asked about the Mobula 6. I have not tried it. Uh, I am... Finally now talking to Banggood a little bit about them sending some stuff. Um, it'll start very slow. Set of motors, uh, maybe a run cam hybrid, hopefully a run cam hybrid. Uh, but if I do a good job, as with anything, hopefully that'll ramp up and maybe they can send me a, uh, a ready to fly at some point. Uh, okay, so how'd you get the quad out of the tree, Sean Hales asked. Uh, left, it o left it there overnight. Came back the next day with a, um, a ro so, all right, so all you guys in your flight bags, you need to put a, where is it? Well, you guys know what it looks like. Get yourself a spool of fishing line. Go to the wherever or go to Amazon and get, um, if you go to the store, if you go to like Dick's or, or wherever, um, get like the high, the strongest uh, fishing line that they've got. You can get a spool spool that's like, hold on, let me change the scene. You can get a spool that's like this big, and it's only about that thick. And that'll have enough length where you can get anything out of any tree. Uh, and it drops right into your flight bag, and you're good to go. We, for a while, probably 30 to 40 throws, um, I had a little weight, basically. So you, you take the, the fishing line, you tie a little weight to the end, um, I was using a, a roll of um, electric tape, actually. Oh, this is the roll. Yeah, it's all chewed up from bouncing off the tree. Um, so tied this on the bottom, 
so the the quad was up like it, it was it was up high it was probably 70 ish feet um so you swing this you can't throw that well, i can't throw that high um so you swing it around on the on the fishing line and you can get a ton of energy built up because you're swing 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 and then woo and you fling it up the only problem is it's it's really hard to aim right because you're spinning it really fast and then you're you got to let it go at like the perfect moment um if you just keep doing it, eventually you'll get it. Uh, but at some point, we kind of got frustrated the next day doing that, and my fingers actually started to get kind of screwed up because you're, you know, it's it's fishing line, so it's it's like plastic and small, so it rubs against your your index finger here. So eventually, your index finger starts to hurt like hell. Um, so for the first time ever, I tied the. Um, uh, the fishing line to the bottom of my other rig that I had. It's actually my, my long range rig. Um, and had my buddy Chris hold the, like tension the, um, fishing line. And I, as carefully as I could launched it. So the, the dolphin frame that I have that on, um, has an adjustable GoPro and a bunch of adjustment in the, um, FPV cam. So I pushed the FPV cam down to zero degrees up tilt. So now I'm able to just go straight up and then, Find the quad. Chris is, is tensioning the line so it doesn't slack up and, and spin around the props. Fly it forward, right up to the rig. Go inside of the rig on the tree, and as soon as you get over the branch, disarm it. And it'll drop straight down, and the person tensioning has to let it go because you want it to fall down with a bunch of energy to try to, in case it starts plinkoing, you want it to have as much speed and energy and, and you know downward momentum as possible so it can hopefully fall out because if you put a second one in the tree now you also have that fishing line stuck up there and it's a real mess from from what i've been told but i was fine dropped quad we had to try it three times one of the third time dropped straight down now we've got the fishing line over the over the um over the correct branch take the fishing line if you have a long sleeve shirt wrap the fishing line around your forearm here and then you can just yank as hard as you can and shake the branch, throw the quad out, all is well. Uh, on Amazon, I just realized that they have like hundreds, like 200 pound uh, fishing line. So that's what I'm gonna get next because we use this whole spool. Um, I'm gonna get nice, like like thicker stuff because this stuff that I had was probably like 100 pound test maybe. And like, it's just a little bit too thin and it really, like after a while, it really wears the hell out of your finger. But I don't know, man. If if I ever have a second person there, I might always just fly another quad up over the branch. Although if, if you get something buried like deep inside of the tree, you wouldn't be able to do that. You'd still be stuck throwing it over. Um, but yeah, good uh, retrieval tips for you guys. Good question from Sean Hales. Oliver Bodwell asks... Oh, we talked about the 1505s. Um... Yeah, so the oh, so the one thing we didn't talk about with those 1505s is the KV. 3600 KV is a little low. Um, supposedly, they made those for four-inch bi-blade props. They made that, those for like a four-inch toothpick. Um, I don't know. That seems a little weird. Oh, God. My solution to the lower KV is going to be probably 5S. Um, I'm going to fly it on 4S initially see how it is and then <clears throat> i have a feeling i'm gonna go to 5s with it um speedix is finally making a nice small esc that's called it's their is line um the way speedix names their escs um if it's an is and then numbers the is is designating that it's a bl heli s uh, esc and then the numbers after it are the amp rating i think it's an is 30 it's the only IS um, that's fi that's rated for 5S. Uh, and then there, the, the other Speedex ESCs are their GS line. The GS stands for um, BL Heli 32. So, yeah, I'm going to have to grab one of those IS 30s because those are one of the only truly small um, ESCs that I know of that will take up to 5S. Although, I, some of the... I stick with Speedex ESCs, so I'm sure, like... Um, Mamba or the other, or maybe like iFlight, they might be making them that go up to 5S. But I've had good luck with Speedix. I'm staying with them forever. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So, oh yeah, by the way, Double A, how'd you do the not at tag thing? That's pretty cool. 
what else was in this question, Oliver? Great question, by the way. Uh, say it's for four and three. Oh, yeah. We, we're talking about the same thing. <laughs> carry a... Yeah, dude. That that will totally carry a, a Tarsier hybrid. So um, the 1306s on this rig, 200 all up. This is a Tarsier rig. Um, I'm going to have that back together soon. That's what I was mentioning before. All the patrons have gotten to see a super secret video buried on my channel because that's one of the perks to being on my Patreon is... I have tons of unreleased videos, and they all go to the Patreon uh, page. And, yeah, that's a rig that's carried a Tarsier, and it's real hard to... to it, there's almost no... You almost have no idea it's not a 5-inch rig, to be totally honest with you. And I know everybody says that, but it's actually true this time. And the Tarsier, with a couple little tricks, looks a whole hell of a lot like a GoPro Session 5. <laughs> Um, so stay tuned. I am working on the full edit for that. That'll come out publicly at some point, maybe in the next week or two. Uh, Daniel asked, did I build the TP3 yet? No, I haven't done a thing with toothpicks yet, unfortunately. Um, but I did, uh, put in an order with Kebab, uh, from FPV Cycle. Um, shout out to, to Bob. All you guys, if you want anything toothpick related, get your asses over to his channel. It's fpvcycle.com. I love that name because, like, I think he chose that name as, like, a nod to, like, the unbelievable product cycle within FPV, right? Like, every two months, it feels like all your gear is completely outdated and you have to sell everything and buy everything brand new again. Don't ever do that. You, there are two three-year-old rigs that I've got that fly every bit as good as the current ones, which I hate to admit, but I spent a lot of time tuning back then. So, yeah fpvcycle.com. I got some stuff coming for the whoop and toothpick giveaways from Kebab. Uh, and I think he also said he's going to try to throw in some fun stuff for you guys. So um, I'm going to be mentioning Bob on pretty much every live stream because he's a great guy. He's doing it the right way. Um, he's putting in the work and exploring every single possible combination to find the right one. Um, and with micros, that's just what you have to do. Uh, him and I talked when, when he wanted to start to get into micros uh, about a year ago. Um, he looked me up and we started talking on Facebook uh, Messenger every single night. And I just like brain dumped on him. Just Here's everything I know. And he took it and ran with it. And he's done such a good job. Um, the toothpick stuff is so, so, so cool. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, let me hit a couple more of these comments and then we will do one more product spotlight i'm going to save a couple of them for um the next time drone coats is asking if i use his name in vain oh man i missed it there he is guys there's the goat there's our new uh mascot oh it's just terrific if you're not familiar with that sound bite um search youtube for screaming goats and if you're as demented as I am, you better have a diaper handy. All right. Uh, Guillermo is asking what my recommendation is for two inches. Uh, my actual recommendation is to go up to a three-inch rig. Um, they're, a two-inch rig is only an inch smaller, all said and done, um, than a three-inch. Well, no, I guess... Yeah, yeah, total size, like shooting through a gap, right? It's only actually an inch smaller, which you're not going to miss the gap by by that inch. Let's just be real, right? Two-inch rigs are fun to build. Don't get me wrong. I have built many. The problem is there's a big efficiency hit that you take with them. And going from two inches up to two and a half inches, there is a serious increase in efficiency. Going from two, in, two and a half to three inches there's another pretty pretty real increase in efficiency. So, unfortunately, that is my recommendation, is to bail <laughs> on it. But if you're just doing it to have fun, awesome. It's super cool because you can spin the, the bejesus out of those props, and it just makes a fun sound, and everybody goes, what the hell's that? You know, 7 zillion RPM. Uh, I don't know any frames. I, I don't really know any 2-inch frames at the moment. So my only recommendation is to be on the motors, and if you're going to build something durable, like like over 100 grams-ish, 
my ideal motor and i do i actually have a patreon post on this as well i break down like different uh weights and different recommendations for battery cell count mah motor propeller so for a two inch uh the best rig i ever got running was on an 1105 um an 1104 will also work most 1104s are actually 1105s when you measure the stator so just get an i don't think anybody markets a, an 1105 motor but like i said most 1104 motors when you measure the stator it's five millimeters tall um and 7500 kv with 3s that was the best two inch rig that i ever built it had the right mix of power to weight to control um, you could probably also get away with going to like a 12 o probably like a 1204 maybe a 1203 maybe also a 1303 um, that would be my recommendation for two inch i think that's going to be the right um, sized motor to control that weight of prop so there you go there's two inch in a nutshell uh what else do we have Rotten Tomatoes asking me what I'm going to call it. Yeah, we'll just call it The Frame from now on. Uh, or if you guys have any suggestions, hit me with it. I, I was uh, I was hoping to actually work with X-Hover on it. Um, X-Hover has the B-roll frame, uh, which is very similar to this. It has the front arm swung back a little bit, so there's absolutely no prop in view, which I kind of like. Uh, I'm going to do something a little different to get around that. The problem with the B-roll frame is... It doesn't have any motor protection out here. The The end of the arm uh, like terminates right after the bolt headers. So if you crash vertical like this, the bell of the motor is going to hit first and you're going to destroy the motor. Um, having a nice little point or even better yet, little devil horns on the end of an arm makes such a difference in durability when it comes to motors. You will break ha I mean, a third as many motors if you just have a little bit extra carbon on the end of the arm. Um, so I was hoping to work with them and make a C-roll, <laughs> frame called the C-roll, which would basically be what I'm looking for. Um, but I I thought I might have an in over there, and I don't. And to be quite honest, I've been working with companies. It hasn't been working out. I'm just going to do this thing myself. It's Cutting carbon is not difficult. The engineer that we're working with, it looks like might have access to a... Uh, a, a CNC that can cut carbon. So this might be uh, this might be pretty sick. Stay tuned. Uh, Guillermo asked the two-inch question again. All right, good. Uh, Steve-O says summer. Oh, right, summer. <laughs> I was like, no, it's not. It's winter. It's cold. Uh, Paul Beach says need it in the UK. I got to figure that out, huh? Hmm. Well, I will say this. Rotorius who is based in the UK, will be coming out with the Ripper. And the Ripper is a frame that I've been working on for a long time, dumping all of my suggestions and ideas and, and all that. So worst case scenario, you guys will be able to buy that from Rotorius. But I will certainly figure out a way to ship it over there to you guys. Um, if anybody stateside here has some kind of a secret how to ship to overseas cheaper... Hook a brother up. CIDFPV on Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Hook me up. Shoot me a message. I don't know anything about shipping. Uh, and I don't want to leave you guys out. So there you go with that. TP3 question again. We talked about that. How much does the frame weigh? Asks double A. It's going to be 20-ish grams. I don't want to get up into the 30s. But it very well might be 29 grams. Um... It depends. We're, we're going to do, you know, we're, we're designing this from the ground up. So we have to figure out where we're going to put the, the relief holes to, to shave weight. Um, we need to figure out what we're going to beef up, what we're not going to beef up. Um, the arm, the three inch arms are definitely going to be three millimeters at no question whatsoever. Um, the Impulse RC Mini Alien and Mini Reverb have two and a half millimeter arms. And the feedback that I get on that frame is that the arms break too often. Um, they are removable arms, so it's not the end of the world when they break. It's just annoying, right? Uh, so we'll see. I, I will probably also want to do lightweight arms and basher arms. So like 
maybe a, a two mil three inch prop arm for somebody that's doing long range and then a three mil hell maybe even a four mil for something that's completely bomb proof um but when you start to go totally nuts like that the motors become the weak point and it doesn't necessarily get much more durable so i have a feeling three millimeter is where we'll land on the thickness of the arm uh so yeah we're gonna keep it in the 20s that that's for sure um in the the three inch setup yeah <laughs> uh jason peters asking about the caddx dji vtx i think that is one of the more exciting things that has come to the world of micros in a long long time getting hd into a micro is still a pain in the ass the tarsier user experience is horrible the run cam hybrid uh, being 24 millimeters tall is horrible. Uh, so there just isn't, and the, and the single lens ones are just difficult to fly through. They, they just don't have, they sacrifice the FPV feed for the HD. So you're, you're never going to be able to fly the best that you've ever flown on those single lenses. Um, just because basically what it does for the FPV feed is it crops in on the HD sensor. So the FPV feed has a uh, has much less of a field of view like 130 140 field of view so for me somebody that flies very wide field of view 160 170 um, it's almost unflyable if you guys are used to flying low field of view you might be totally fine with those single lens cameras but if you're flying freestyle i am a, a die hard believer that you want as wide of a field of view as possible um, so that you can do a lot of the wacky wild backwards sideways stuff um, with a wide field of view you will literally see the tree coming sooner and you'll try to avoid it you'll have a chance of avoiding it so that's what i think about that uh oh and i mean also it's recording hd on the goggles like come on that's that's amazing anybody who's put more than 20 batteries i would say through a micro with hd on it has shot their micro sd card and lost it in the field um not gonna happen if you're recording in the goggles obviously the dji goggles are hd which is insane uh right now it's scraggle season in those goggles you can see the scraggle it's awesome um the other thing that they pick up really well is power lines <laughs> Um, I had a while where I hit a lot of power lines. It was weird. It was like a couple months in a row where all I did was smash into power lines. Um, so yeah, that's going to be real cool. That's going to be real, real cool. Uh, what else? What else? What else? It's Blunty ordered those 1306s. Awesome. Uh, Blunty was also in the uh, Discord chat last night. Link down below and link on the Patreon page. Um, the, uh, patrons will automatically get, uh, put through black magic into the discord and they're in a separate group with a little bit more privileges. Um, they've got their own room to hang out in. Um, they've got a, a talk room to hang out in. And, um, we had so much fun last night that I'm going to start doing a Wednesday night patron, like, hangout in the discord so like eight ish o'clock on wednesday nights i'm going to jump into that room we'll see how rowdy it gets i might have to i might have to like break it out and say like you know these two tiers you guys come in i, I just don't want it to be a, a a hot mess i want you guys to be able to actually talk to me and ask questions and, and shit like that but we'll figure it out we're gonna try it this coming wednesday at eight o'clock and we'll see how it goes so I am now almost caught up. Mongo is asking about the T-Motor T15 motors. Um, T-Motor makes awesome stuff. The T15s, I believe, are at 1106. Uh, the 1106 motor size, in my opinion, doesn't have a really good home. It's a little bit too tall and heavy for a 2-inch prop, but it doesn't have enough stator width for a 2.5-inch prop. So... If they're cheap, sure, I would run them on a low pitch two and a half inch prop, or maybe even a bi blade two and a half inch prop. That's really the only home, in my opinion, for an 1106. Um, and then with that, you just you want a bunch of KV. I think those are like 6,000 KV, so you want to run those on minimum 3S. I would actually run them on 4S and just let them eat all the RPMs. Uh, so there you go. 
Ben Watkins. Oh yeah, talked about the uh, RCX 1306s. And hey Ben, what uh, what KV did you get? Did you get the 4000 KV? I didn't know you were getting those. If I'd known you were getting those, I would have told you to get the 6000 KV because I'm going to build a 2.5 inch rig with 6000 KV 1306s on 4S. And it's going to tear a hole in the space-time continuum. And I can't wait. Uh, Double A is headed over to Bot's show. Awesome. Have a good time. Yeah, Bot, uh, I guess, started just now, 9 o'clock. So I won't, uh, I won't feel bad if you guys ditch on me for him because he's a good time as well. Um, Voltronics asking, would smaller radius motors be better for 3D? By radius, do you mean the, the stator width? Um, if so, I would think the opposite. I would want more stator width for 3D because you've got to stop the propeller in one direction and start it in the other direction. And to do that quickly, it's all about the width of the stator. You need, you need mechanical torque to do that. So I would actually go for the widest stator motor within reason that, that you can find to be able to really spin that prop either direction. Um, that is the problem with 3D right now, is there's still a visible um, movement when you reverse, when you go from positive to negative thrust, and the widest stator possible is going to, in theory, help that. So uh, that's my opinion there. Um, Thomas says, get a throw ball for tree work. Yeah, there's um, uh, fishing weights work really well too. Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of things that you can, I, I never carried a weight around. I would just scrounge through the back of the car for something that was roughly the right weight to tie to the fishing line. That's always kind of worked. But, um, the man, the, the tying the fishing line to the quad thing that worked really, really well. I'm, I'm shocked at how that worked. Um, I've done that with 550 paracord before. Um, the only thing I don't like about the 550 cord is it's not as slippery, so when you go up and over and you try to get your retrieval quad down, it has a more of a tendency to kind of snag and slowly come down and get that hooked and, and stuck as well. So I'm a big fan of the of the fishing line method because it's nice and smooth. It goes right over that branch and, and you're good to go. Uh, all right, cool. So we're good there. I think I saw one more question. Uh, Tiago confirming, be careful. Some of the fishing line cuts your fingers. Absolutely. Be careful. Uh, I think we're good. Are we good? I think we're good. Not quite good. David News says, happy new year's. Tell Kristen I said hello. Kristen, David News says hello. Hi. She says hello back. Uh, Chris E is asking... Cool. This is the last question, and then I'm going to get back into uh, my bullet points. Chris E. asking, what are the drawbacks of just using higher pitch props uh, with the lower OF motors? Is OF near KV? Yeah, he meant to type KV. Uh, drawbacks of using higher pitch props with the lower KV motors in a 3-inch. Fantastic question, Chris. Um, so there's a couple things going on when we talk about uh, what the correct motor is for a given prop size. The, the simple, it, it, I could talk about this for the next hour, um, but I'm going to try to get through this in a minute. In order to do that, I have to put a stopwatch on myself. You have my phone, baby? Yeah. Can you put a stopwatch on and scream when it hits one minute? All right. I'm going to start before you hit the button. So I get some extra time. The motor has to have enough torque for the weight of the propeller. Pitch be damned. The physical weight of the propeller and the physical weight of the bell of the motor have to speed up and slow down at a horrendously rapid rate. So the wider the stator is, the more instantaneous torque. Think a lug wrench on your car, you can't get the bolts off, you get a breaker bar, another tube to slide over that lug wrench, which gives you a longer lever, and you pop the nuts right off. Um, same kind of deal here. The width of the motor has to be enough for the weight of the rotating assembly. The pitch is how much air is being pushed. So the pitch is not just determined um, by the width, but also the height, because the pitch also 
is affected by the raw horsepower, let's say, of the motor. Uh, so, and the deal there is you don't want to overprop it. If you just go nuts on pitch, you can potentially have a motor without enough horsepower to turn that thing and get it up to its happy RPM range. So that's a minute. That's where I'm going to stop. That I got like 99% there. Um, yeah. You will always know an overpropped motor. You will fly it and it will just feel like shit. Um, and it will have terrible battery life. So there you go, man. There's your 60 seconds of pitch versus motor size versus the physical world that we live in. Back to the matter at hand. Type the name of the song if you know what that lyric is from. Product Spotlight. I have one more item that I want to look at. Um, anybody with more questions, tag me to light it up in orange. I will get to them probably in about 30 minutes. Uh, next item here is... Okay, so at the moment, uh, I have been hoarding T-Motor F40 Pro 2 um, motors, which are 2306 and they are roughly 29 grams per motor. The only 2306, the only realistic five inch uh, propeller freestyle motor carrying a GoPro, 600-ish grams all up, um, is a, um, the only other lightweight option is the are the steel motors, the, the steel stout motors. The V3s uh, have taken a step in the right direction in that they've gone from a three millimeter to a four millimeter uh, motor shaft. Unfortunately, it seems like they may have not hit the mark with the bearings. I've read a lot of people having trouble with the bearings and the durability of those motors. So with how hard I crash and that I fly concrete all the time and that I crash a lot on concrete, um, I'm not going to go down that road. So and the and the F40 Pro 2s have been discontinued. They they now have the F40 Pro 3, which is a 2306 and a half, and it's 33 grams of motor. Um, four grams on the end of each arm is a big deal. That completely changes the feel and the prop wash performance of a rig. So yeah, I am on the hunt for another sub 30 gram 2306. And it looks like Korea Rhea is getting pretty damn close. This is uh, specifically, it looks like lightweight version uh, of their TOA. And I thought the weight was in here somewhere. I could have sworn the weight was in here somewhere. Uh, is it in here? Let's see. N52 magnets, that's pretty standard nowadays. Um, <clears throat> titanium shaft, that's what you get when you pay $25 for a motor. The, the Eco motors that are sub $20 per, they have a steel shaft, which is... Uh, steel will bend earlier than than titanium, um, but it won't snap like titanium. Titanium is a better idea for a motor shaft because if you bend a motor shaft, it's ruined anyway. So you might as well snap the damn thing. Uh, so titanium shaft is a good thing. A uh, bunch of different voltages. Uh, uh, a screw instead of a C-clip on the bottom. That's fantastic. Where the hell's the weight? I... I could have sworn they had the weight. I thought it was like 30. Oh, there it is. 31.2 grams. So I believe at the moment, this, whenever this comes out, well, it looks like it is in stock now. So I believe this is the the, the lightest weight 2306. So when I run out of these F40s, I will be going on to these. Um, I've heard a lot of really good things about the, the new crop of motors, the new iFlight Zings, the... I don't know. If you go to any of the, the stateside um, sites and hit new products, they'll, all the, the new crap and motors will be in there. Uh, so yeah, this TOA Lite 2306 is relevant to my interest. Cool looking bell design. Uh, where are the KVs? I think the lowest KV is 1800, which is a little high for me. Um, I really like these 1600 KV F40s that I'm on now. Um, but I'll just, I'll just put a throttle curve. Here it is 1850. So I'll just put a throttle curve on them and, and be done with it. Um, 1850, 2250, 2450, and 2650. Um, th those are really solid KVs. Th those are the right numbers. So 
There we go. Uh, Chris E. with, a, with an awesome little follow-up question. I'm just going to hit this one um, before we move on. Uh, doesn't a lower KV motor have more torque at a, uh, than a higher KV at comparative throttle settings? Uh, so it's actually, the believe it or not, it's the opposite. When you raise the KV of the motor, you take uh, windings out, and all you're actually doing is... Um, and this is my understanding through talking to Ryan Harrell of Mini Quad Test Bench a good amount. Um, you're just making the you're just basically making the motor have more power, and the fact that it has more power and it's it's willing to take more um, more energy in allows it to spin higher. Um, it's not like you know there's not like a throttle limiter in there or a mechanical limiter or anything, right? Um, it's just they wind it and they spin it up and it spins to X RPM. So by going up in KV, you add torque throughout the entire um, throttle range of the motor. So, but in it doing that, it's going to draw more power. And then if you're running a high pitch prop, it's going to be drawing a ton of current. So that's why typically people will run a higher KV motor with a lower pitch prop versus a lower KV motor with a higher pitch prop. So there you go with that. Back on target here, uh, I mentioned Patreon, but let me, um, I, I've got some fun new stuff. I've been brainstorming like crazy. Um, if you don't know, I've got a Patreon. The link is down here in the description. Uh, for 10 cents a day, which is three whole dollars a month, uh, you can get in the door. You get, um, you get a, uh, a window into my heart and my undying love forever which is, I mean, that's worth at least five cents a day, right? Uh, you get access to a ton of unpublished videos on my channel. Um, I do some, like, video editing-ish streams in there. Uh, build goals, you know, like, um, or not build goals, build planning. You know, hey, I'm looking to build a, a three-inch at 100 grams. What components should I get? I'm going to help you guys out with that. Um, the, uh, you know, problem solving, like last night on the discord, uh, somebody had a quad that was falling out of the sky and they posted a video of it. And it's, it's funny. They had been, um, in the, ch in the discord chat, they'd been trying to troubleshoot this for like, I don't know, 15 minutes. Um, and then when I jumped in there and saw them trying to troubleshoot, I saw there was a video, played the video and legitimately within 30 seconds into the video, I knew exactly what the problem was and told them, Hey, motor three or ESC3 uh, is failing on you. Lo and behold, he looks at the motor and one of the one of the uh, the wires that goes into the windings was starting to come apart. So it was just intermittently letting go. Um, stuff like that, you know, what, what what's your time worth? Is is your time worth, is, is saving a bunch of time worth three bucks a month to you? If it is, come to the party. We're having a blast in there. Um, I will warn you though, once you get in the door, you're gonna wanna spend more than three bucks a month because of the giveaways. Uh, I am doing five giveaways uh, per week for as long as I can afford it. <laughs> uh, I, I'm hoping, my, my, I'm, I'm sort of using the Mr. Beast model and putting all of my energy and time and money into it right now in hopes that, and it has so far, um, in hopes that it will continue to grow to the point where um, it becomes sort of self-sufficient in that Banggood is sending me stuff Get FPV is, is sponsoring a part of the stream. Um, I, 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 those are really all I've, I've reached out to so far. But I'll reach out to all the manufacturers and say, hey, you know, I'll give you a shout out and I'll use your stuff and review your stuff. All you got to do is, is get in on this. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with that. The way that the giveaways work, there is a $5 a month tier that enters you in the Tiny Whoop and uh, uh, Toothpick giveaways, uh, weekly giveaways. The uh, $10 tier is micro brushless stuff. And the $20 tier is five inch stuff. Again, they're all going to be done every Monday, unless I have a nervous breakdown like I did this Monday, then it'll be Friday like we are right now. Uh, and then I usually try to do like one or two more um, super chat giveaways just for fun. Uh, $30 tier if you have all the above, if, if you want to, you know, if you have whoops and toothpicks and micro brushless rigs and five inch rigs, you can do the $30 tier to get in on all the giveaways. 
and then there are more tiers beyond that and same deal you know any anything above the thirty dollar tier and you get entered into into all the other ones so um yeah that that's been super fun we've been doing it for what about a month or so and you guys seem to love it i have a blast doing it we're gonna do it in a minute here and see who gets some more stuff anybody who's won in the past two i'm sorry that i haven't shipped your stuff out i swear to god i will ship it out tomorrow um kristen has to go to the post office to get a letter that was sent to her from the the tax commissioner because that uh so yeah i'll get everything out tomorrow i'll get tonight's stuff out uh last week's and the week before that <laughs> sorry for the wait but you didn't pay for it so screw you <laughs> Um, I won't let it pile up like that. I am going to let it pile up two weeks at a time though, because I don't want to have to go every single week. So fair warning, I will only ship every other week, but I won't let it go three weeks again. This is insane. Um, okay. I think that covers everything on the Patreon. No, 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 no. So two more exciting things on one more exciting thing on Patreon. Uh, and it's the goals. I, I, I forgot all about the, the Patreon goals. And let me go over here to, hold on, let me switch scenes. I don't, I don't necessarily want you guys to see the whole list of patrons just for their own, whatever, security, that's not the right word, identity, whatever. <laughs> Make up your own words. Uh, so here's the goals. Um, they, they let you set up three, it, it appears. Hey, there's my stupid face. Look at these socks, guys. Come on. Come on. You gotta get in. Get get your ass over to the Patreon. You get you get candid pictures like this with the most awesome socks that my wonderful wife has ever given me, which are the perfect analog for this stream. Although, I haven't screwed much up tonight. Tonight's been a good night. Maybe because I made a list of, of what I need to do. Um, so, <laughs> let's get these socks out of here. So, our current goal, 69 huh, out of 100 patrons. When we, as you see here, when we get to 100, everybody in the $5 and up tiers is going to be put into a Monday night giveaway for an entire build. It'll be like a, a whole separate giveaway, and it's going to be top to bottom build, my tune, you know, like something that I have built for me that. I'm going to pass on to you guys. I think for the first one here at 100, I think it's going to be a micro brushless. I might actually just ask you guys, though. I might literally say, like, hey, whoever the, the winner is, like, if you don't... Yeah, 50 bucks is my phone number. <laughs> Jason calls out. Um, so, yeah, a whole build. That's going to be awesome. Uh, can I show the other... View all? So, 200. We're going to do it again. It's going to be another full build. Uh, at 200, how about this? 200 for sure you get to pick. 5-inch or uh, micro brushless. Uh, maybe toothpick by the time, but screw that. They're cheap to build. Make me build something expensive for you. Um, but you'll also get the shirt off my back. I don't know if you guys probably can't read it, but you will get the literal shirt off my back. The stream that I'm doing, when I notice, I'm not going to say like when I hit 200 because I'm the worst at like, like when I hit 2,000 subs on YouTube, I had no idea. You guys told me. I was like, oh, cool. Um, so whenever I notice that I'm at 200, I will literally give you the shirt off my back, which has no value, but it'll be funny. Maybe I'll even do the rest of the stream naked. I won't do that to you guys. I promise. Don't leave the channel or leave the Patreon. It will not be the Stig shirt, Mongo. I will not wear my... <laughs> like from England Stig shirts when I get anywhere near 200 fair warning <laughs> they were too expensive the the one shirt uh the one James May shirt I had a an eBay alert for about a year to try to find that because it was like discontinued and it was only over in the EU um yeah so there was that and then here's the nutty one if somehow we get to 500 patrons um it's going down uh, what did I even write? So I guess we'll do another giveaway, it looks like. Cool. But I will also fly to you or pay for you to fly to me here in Atlanta. I'm not going to cover your, like, room and board. Like, you got to get your own hotel room or Airbnb or whatever. Um, but 
I will fly you here to hang out with me for a weekend and we'll go flying, we will build, we will stream. Screw it. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a stream together. If you want, if you don't want to, that's okay. I'll also make dinner. Kristen will make dinner. I'm an She's amazing a, cook. a wonderful cook. I'll make dinner. Uh, we'll destroy some shit and we'll have a blast. So there you go. I might actually make a tier for that. I, I noticed DJ's got a tier for that. Um, like, I'll fly to you. Um, I, I, I don't know what I would price that at. But if you guys are interested in that and, like, willing to pay, it would, it'll, it'll be expensive, right? Because it's a couple hundred bucks to fly to you, and then i got to cover, like, food and all that I other shit. Five, it was, five. was it five? Yeah. So, like, it'll be at least 500 bucks. If, if anybody is even remotely interested in that, uh, message me somewhere. And if, if a couple people are, I'll do it. I don't care. I, I would love to come out and fly with you guys. Um, but, you know, it's that's that's an expensive thing for me. I, I lose all the time of that weekend doing stuff here that makes me money and blah, 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 blah. But, uh, yeah, I would love to fly with you guys, teach you everything that I know. Um, you know, we'll do flying instruction stuff. It'll be an, an absolute riot. Uh, Discord, again, the link is down below. When you jump onto Patreon, you uh, are automatically put into the Discord. A uh, couple patron-specific uh, things in there. I'm just figuring out Discord, so be nice. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it, it's, um, it's a, there's so many options, it's really hard, but I'm figuring it out, I'll get it figured out. Right now, the thing I'm dealing with is it seems to mute everyone when they join the, um, the talking channels, and then I'm the only one that can unmute them. Uh, so I did something last night that may have fixed it, but it probably didn't. So we'll get over that hump, get on Discord. I had a blast on there last night. I, I will probably not spend much time on Discord because I have no self-control and like like I meant to go on last night for 15 minutes just to like get up to date and I was on there for like three and a half hours <laughs> um, and I, I just I can't do that all the time. Kristen will rightfully hit me in the head with a frying pan. So yeah, leave me messages on Discord. I'll get back to you when I can. I am giving the majority of my time to Patreon. Um, the messages that I get on there, I'm trying to get back to as quick as I can. Um, just everything that happens on Patreon, because you guys are, are you know, I, you're hiring me for, you know, whatever your tier is, that deserves my love. So that's the majority of my love, and then Facebook, and then Instagram, and, and YouTube, and, and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to Wednesday nights. That'll, that'll be fun. Uh, Wednesday nights, 8 o'clock, be in the Discord, get into the voice channel, and we'll all scream obscenities at each other. What I think I'll do, if, a, if it fills up for the first week, what I'll probably do is mute everybody. And then I'll pull one person off mute individually. They can ask a question and then answer it next. Boom, 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 right down the list. Cool. Uh, pilot Spotlight. Who do we have tonight? No. No. Oh. Oh. Here you guys go. So... A couple streams ago, I'd mentioned that I I my uh, I thought that my old channel with the oldest videos that I've got went away, but I found it. I totally forgot. It was under my old. Uh, this used to be my old forum name. Eighty seven was the year of my first car. It was nineteen eighty seven Mustang. Um, so yeah, if you look up Ciati eighty seven, you can watch my airsoft videos and um, harassing my old best friend in the world, Beta the Test Cat. Uh, with the first flying thing I ever had, which was an old school. It was the, um, uh, oh God, it was infrared. So you had to point the, the controller at it and then it was uh, counter, counter rotating blades up on top. And then the rear, that, that's what would keep it from spinning. And then the rear was just a pusher prop, a tiny little pusher prop in the back <laughs> that would make it go forward. And, uh, I'm not going to spoil the video for you guys, but Beta doesn't like it, and he smacks it out of the air. So yeah, Ciati. Oh wait, here I'll just I'll hit you guys with the uh, with the link in the chat. There you guys go. So enjoy that. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> uh, I I had here it is. Fry FPV is going to be our pilot spotlight of the night. Uh, this is another one of the uh, European folks. They are just killing it over there. There's a lot of pilots who 
uh, cement, I got into it right as the system of stuff was coming out. I was getting out of the hobby right as um, the system of guns were, were becoming a thing, unfortunately. So, yeah, Fry FPV, this dude's awesome. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick one. We're going to do his Vietnam cinematic edit, but spend some time on this dude's channel. He is an awesome pilot. Uh, here comes his a link to his channel in the chat. There you guys go. Show him some love. 856, uh, 55 subscribers. That is bullshit. This guy needs to get over a thousand. So let's get him there. Tell your friends, post it on your pages. Um, get people onto Fry's channel. He deserves some love. So let's hit his Vietnam video real quick here. Uh, 414. I'm going to cut it halfway through because I know that the quality sucks when I play it through here, but I just want to give you guys an idea of um, how sick this dude is. So here you go. Enjoy for about two minutes. Change all the settings the one night, and they're all screwed up, and it hasn't been saving the uh, the corrected settings. So yeah, there you guys go. Hit his channel, watch some of his stuff. Uh, here's the link again, and uh, yeah. So the the for anybody that's new, um, the the whole point of the pilot spotlight is a big part of my growth as a pilot has been making sure that I always watch fresh pilots and just watch people's flying. Um, if you, if you have like a buddy that you fly with, you can go one up at a time and watch each other in the goggles. That's how, uh, Drew and, uh, uh, Jeff Orta kind of pushed each other and got better and better and better. I don't have that. So I watch people on the internet and it's, I know it doesn't seem like it when you're doing, when you're watching it, but it really does give you these like subtle ideas and, and, just little things that you do here and there. It's it's really, really valuable. Try to watch a couple flight edits a day. Um, I, I feel like people aren't watching flight edits as, as much as they used to. And um, that sucks because it, it takes a long time to, to do an edit. Um, and you're very proud of it when you're done. And when it gets, you know, no views, you're like, Ugh, why do I even bother? So start watching flight edits again. I'm going to keep giving you guys one awesome pilot that I look up to um, as, you know, just awesome every stream until the dawn of time. <laughs> Let's do some giveaways, man. Who wants to do... Anybody want to do some, some giveaways? I'm going to wait. I'll wait for you guys to say if you want to do them. I can wait. 
Oh, wait. You gotta tell me in the chat. I'll give you time to get them ready. <laughs> um, okay. Here we almost go. Uh, oh, I gotta check one thing, though. I gotta check one thing to see if... So, all right, so I did screw something up. Usually at the beginning of the stream, I tell you guys if you want to get in on tonight's giveaways to go to the Patreon right now um, and, uh, and, and get in on one of the tiers, 5, 10, 20, 30, or above tiers. Uh, but I forgot to do that. If anybody happened to do it, I'm, I'm going to look really quick here, but I doubt it because I didn't tell you guys that and how the hell would you know. Uh, if you get in there... If, if you get into the Patreon, how about this? If you get into the Patreon before um, I end the stream, I'll put you in next week twice. So it'll be as if I hooked you guys up. And as I've mentioned before, the, the prizes keep getting better and better and better and better and better. So I'll actually be hooking you up by doing that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me look at my notifications and see if anybody... Well, somebody went down, so I guess I have to take. <laughs> I guess. Oh wait, no, that was that was the third. No, that was yeah, that was today. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I'm glad I did this because I have to remove someone. Hang on one second. Let's get this taken care of real quick. I made the wheels, but they look weird. What's going on here? Oh no, there they go. There they go. Okay. Okay. This wheel looks weird, though. What's going on with this wheel here? One, two, three. All right, well, it wouldn't be a CID FPV stream if I didn't fuck everything up. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's five, and then... Oh, no, okay, I did do it right. I did do it right. I just did them in a, in a strange order. Um, okay, cool. So, yeah, one, two, three. Okay, so I got to get... One person off of here. And let me do a quick search. He's not on here anyway. That's odd. He must have done it this morning. Okay, so we're good. Uh, this first one is going to be the Tiny Whoop tier. And let me get over to that scene. And we'll go like this. Oh, nope. We won't go like that. Just leave it like that. Uh, where's the Tiny Whoop stuff? Okay, so, tonight's Tiny Whoop prize is this really nice little pleather case with a, uh, super fancy little custom cut foam in here. Got a spot for a bunch of batteries there. Ooh, I can see you guys through the battery holes! Uh, and then of course the <laughs> Whoop spot. Um, it's got a, a cool little mesh bastard here for putting things. And uh, this is a Beta FPV brushless frame. This is a Beta FPV canopy. Whole bunch of propellers. And a couple of little um, 3D printed camera mounts. And yeah, some of the four blades, some of the Rack and Heli three blades. A bunch of fun whoop stuff. So let's see who wins it. Somebody already won this, uh, but they didn't message me. And I messaged them and I haven't heard back. So I, I basically I give it like three weeks and then if I haven't heard back, I'm like, well, I mean, what what can I do? <laughs> so whoop case, spinning the wheel. Looking like Oscar. Ooh, Oscar gets it. Oscar Zeladin, shoot me a message on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon with your address and what you won. Um, Tiny Whoop case, or just say something like that. And uh, I will get it out to you tomorrow if you're quick enough. One down, four to go. Micro Brushless Tear is up next. And... It's gonna be a turtle. We're getting HD'd the fuck up, people. It's not just a turtle. 
It's a turtle with a bunch of extra stuff, actually. Um, so here is the, you know, the main jib jab, but then extra little cable action, entire extra camera. I gotta get a, I gotta get one more of these lights and put it here so that I can turn it on when I'm putting stuff in front of it. Well, let me try something real quick. What about this? How obnoxious is that? Oh yeah, it sucks, but eh, it does work. All right. So yeah, an entire extra camera and a bunch, a bunch of the random wild and wooly little accessories in there that come with it. Um, and one of each of the different lenses, I believe, for these things. So this is the glass lens. This is the one that everybody loves. I don't love the, the, the picture quality on this lens is the best of the three, but the field of view is the most narrow of the three. So it drives me crazy. It might be totally fine for you. This is the turbo eye lens. This one's kind of in the middle, a little bit more field of vision, a little bit worse um, picture quality. And then on the camera is the golden goose lens. <laughs> Um, this is the lens that came with the original turtle and this one has the widest field of view and the worst picture quality. It still looks fine, um, but it's a, it's a plastic, uh, it's a plastic element up in the front. So it, it's just not quite as good as, as the glass one, but you'll have one of each. You can pick the one that you like the best and then start smashing shit and you'll have a bunch of extra stuff to replace it with. So... The question now becomes, who is about to get turtled the fuck up? Let me make sure that I did the turtle wheel properly because I I, I thought there were more people than this. Um, I'm gonna do this off the uh, off the screen here for a second. So hold up. Actually, while I'm doing this. Let me put on, uh, Pika put out a new video. We Pika was our pilot spotlight uh, a couple weeks ago, and he put something new out, and I think it's really good. I, I just started watching it, so no promises, but let me give you guys something to look at while I faff about over here. I'm going to kill my mic for a second. Yeah. 
where the fuck is Dan? Why is it not showing? Oh, there it is. Oh, he's in the $20. That's why. Fuck. How the hell did that happen? Something got fucked? Eh, a little bit. I forgot to share the video. I forgot to change scenes. What the hell? Did I not put the video on? <laughs> um, are you kidding, Euro? Hmm. No, I I did um. Hmm. Thanks, guys. Uh, let me actually put Pika's video on. I gotta check what just happened. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. All right, let me put Pika's video on for real this time. I'll actually. Uh, I'll be back. Give me a minute, guys. Garcia, Ben Watkins, Billy Presley, Jim Golden, Cage, Nick Santrach. Oh no, he doesn't want to be in it. Oscar. Why does this keep happening? <laughs>
Well, we got some fuck-ups for you guys. <laughs> it wouldn't be a stream if we didn't screw things up. So it's the keybinds. I forgot that I um, I bound the scenes to the uh, to the number pad, one, two, and three. And then, so then when I was over here doing things, it was uh, screwing things up. Let me fix that real quick, guys, because I, I will not remember to fix that. Hotkeys! And we're going to turn them off because there pretty much isn't... Uh, I'll turn them back on at some point, but I'll do like uh, open Apple 1 or Command 1 or Shift 1 or some, some weird shit like that. But for now, I'm just going to turn them off. Cool. Keybinds are off. Uh, the wheel is fixed. Okay, so here's what happened. I now have to, um, all right, so the way Patreon works is you can go into a tier and then change your donation amount. And what happens is, for whatever reason, your tier doesn't actually change, um, so... What I have to do now is organize everybody by their um, their pledge. So that's what I'm doing now. So if if any of you guys are showing up in um, if any of you guys are showing up in the wrong drawing here, it's because I think it should be because you've edited your pledge amount. So I'm doing this by pledge amounts now. So if you're from five dollars to nine dollars you were just in that wheel spin if you're ten dollars to nineteen dollars you're about to be in this micro brushless wheel spin and if you're twenty dollars and up you're going to be in the third one so that's what's going on um so now this should be fixed let me give it one last look this is the micro brushless tier and I'm going to go here, pledges 10 to 19, update. Nothing happened. <laughs> ah, there it goes. Okay, so that updated. Here's that list. Starts with Anthony, Anthony Garcia, ends with Tommy Ham. Got it. And then I've got to get the thirty dollar and up ones yep 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 okay so now i have to run this for 30 up to a million and now i gotta make sure all these guys are in there and that's gonna be cole david noose dennis brown patrick vrooman thomas rollins crunked what are you doing on here crunked where are you at how did oh i see what i did i see what i did okay i accidentally put the 20 dollar tier people in here all right, I almost got it right. I was I was very close. I did it with um, I'm able to export these as CSVs, so I did it copy and paste tonight, which was awesome. But I'll have to do it right next time. <laughs> All right, so I got to pull Crunked and Shane and Thomas Bird out of the micro brushless tiers. Thomas Rollins is the last one from the all tier, and let me do this one more time. I'm gonna go. $10 to 19 update and last person is Tommy Ham. Tommy Ham is right next to Thomas Rollins. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh now what do I do? Apply wheel changes? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. So this is good. Oscar won the tiny whoop tier. We're about to spin for the micro brushes. Cole, you won something. <laughs> Where is it? Did I put it up here? Oh, the turtle. <laughs> did. Okay. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. I have no faith in myself. <laughs> um, okay. Cool. Cole, same deal. Message me your address and what you won. And you won the turtle.
with mad extra lenses. I'm muted? Really? No. Really? That's weird. I wonder why. Uh, maybe when I went into oh, it was when I went into preferences. It was when I went into preferences. I'll bet that it uh, it killed the audio. Cool, Cole. Just in case you didn't hear me, uh, message me somewhere. Ciudad FPV, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Patreon, uh, something else. I was muted during. Oh, right. Well, here's what you missed when it was. Well, you'll you'll hear it in a second. It's, it's the goat, screaming goat. Uh, okay. Cole is good to go. Now we move on to the five inch tier and we are going to go with a, it's actually really nice to have. If, if you guys don't have in your bag, a left hand circular polarized antenna or two, um, pick one, pick them up next time you see them like on, on clearance or something. Get yourself a left-hand circular circular antenna. If if like you're you're flying with a bunch of people and you're having issues, you can pop these guys on. Um, if you have rapid fire, there are a lot of guys that are running right-hand and left-hand CPs on rapid fire. Um, the thought process being, the left hand will pick up uh, bounces and multi paths that the right-hand antenna doesn't. And that is what the rapid fire wants because the rapid fire wants to do exactly what that's going to do. It wants to take uh, the, the missing info from the one and fill it in with the other one. I haven't actually tried that yet, but I'm gonna, and I'm excited. And uh, this is a Axie left-hand circular polarized with a UFL. And we're also doing these RCX 2207 motors. These... If you win these motors, you must build a basher quad with them. They are heavy motors, but my God, are they strong. Uh, good power, 2400 KV, uh, one shiny new, four that I have run, but still spin beautifully smooth. Uh, an extra, this is, this is something I love about RCX uh, and my RC Mart. They will sell you an extra motor shaft with the um, with the annoying little washer and the uh, and the little screw for the bottom. How about that? Nobody else sells that. So here you go. And these are cut short. Um, so get you some race wires if uh, if you don't have them. But yeah. So it's five of these. One of them shiny new. The other ones still spin beautifully smooth. I had these on my um, CL1. Uh, fat boy build and man they they moved that that thing was like 680 grams and these these guys hauled that effort around like it was nothing uh so yeah awesome set of rcx 2207 2400 kv motors and a luminaire ufl left hand circular polarized antenna i will click the right scene this time so that my mic doesn't go dead I see what happened. The, the, I, I, okay, hold on, hold on. There it is. Okay. I have one scene for monitor with Zoom mic. I have another scene for monitor with desktop audio. And for whatever reason, the, the scene with the microphone, I shut off the, the microphone and turned on the desktop audio <laughs> like a dummy. All right, cool. So here is our $20 wheel. Let's apply the changes just in case. Um, let me make sure of something. Hang on one second. Hang on one effing second. Now I have like no confidence in, uh, I have a vote of no confidence. What movie is that from? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, see, I, I am wrong. There should be nine on here. 
All right, good. Man, I jacked this all up. Uh, like I said, it's the first time I've done it with um, with these Excel spreadsheets. So I'm kind of not surprised that I screwed up here. All right, so let's get Daniel in here. And we need to get... David, are you in there? Yeah, David, you're in there. Dennis Brown, are you in there? Yep. Uh, Crunked is not in here, but now he is. And we've got some Vrooman. You're there. Shane. I knew, basically, when I didn't see Shane, I was like, hmm, something wrong. Because Shane is my boy. He is, uh, hopefully, I don't know if he's beating it, but he should be beating the hell out of the... Um, that slammed alien of mine. I have faith in him. I, th I think he's given it a good, a good thrashing. Uh, Mr. Bird, you're not in here either. So if the Birdman here, Thomas Bird, wins again tonight, I have a feeling you guys are gonna like figure out where he lives, cause that guy cleaned up last week. I mean, it was, it was like I, I rigged the damn thing. Okay, that's better. This is our $20 tier, uh, well, $20 and up. So let's get it going and push a button. And I think I'm on the right scene. Let's just double check. Hey, look at that. Hey! That just means I get to hit it again. It's Dennis Brown. <laughs> Dennis, didn't you win a bunch of... Hold on, hold on. I feel like the same two people. Hold on, hold on. Let me see. Hold up. Nah, I didn't mark it down. <laughs> Dennis, if you're in here, did you did you win a couple things already? I might be. I I might be. Oh oh oh! I know where I can look it up. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I gotta figure out how to make this wheel spread spread the love out, man. This wheel is uh, is fucking you guys over. <laughs> Um, yeah, you did. What did you win? Oh, you got the, uh, the, the V1. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, Dennis, you're gonna be, <laughs> I was joking with Dennis that, um, if I just never ship his stuff out, he'll keep winning, and then I'll have to build him an entire rig, and he is one step closer, because he's now won the V1, a bunch of V1S props, the, uh, the AIO, uh, ESC flight controller, now he's got motors, <laughs> I guess... All Dennis really needs to win at this point is a frame, a camera, <laughs> and and like like a VTX. <laughs> he'll have a whole he'll have a whole goddamn uh <laughs> <Ciotti> FPV giveaway built. <laughs> well, this just means that more of you guys, I guess, need to get a get in on the uh, the twenty dollar tier to fill this wheel up so that so that the same few guys don't keep winning. Congrats, Dennis. Uh, shoot me a, uh, a message with your, well, I already have your address, so shoot me a message with, uh, motors and, oh man, you got an antenna too, even. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, uh, Dennis, I, I'll spoil the surprise. I don't have any VTXs to give away, so you have to buy your own VTX. Um, there are a bunch of frames coming up though. Like there's a bunch of frames coming up. Um, so maybe hold off on the frame. Uh, what else do you need? Camera? I, I don't have... Oh, so there is a camera coming up in the, um, in the micro brushless tier. Oh, Dennis, you're on the $30 tier. That's why you keep winning, Dennis, because you're in all three giveaways. See? Every week, I'm telling you guys, it's the move, man. It's the move. Ten, less than $10 a week, and you can have a whole quad within, like, a month and a half. <laughs> Hey, Phantom Menace! Nice, IMAX! <laughs> of course, I, IMAX is the one that gets the, uh, <laughs> the fucking movie reference. Uh, it's super weird. Alright, let's do a couple... Um, <laughs> let's do a couple of uh, random... Alright, so I'm going to do this a little different. Um, oh, yeah! <laughs> David's got the camera coming. Nice. Um, Alright. We're going to do a couple, what's it, why can't I remember super what, Super Chat, chat. Jesus Christ. Uh, we're going to do a couple Super Chat slash sticker uh, giveaways. We'll do two of them. Uh, it's, it's props. Here's how we're going to do it, though. The amount 
that you do for the super chat is how many times you get entered. Uh, but so I don't have to enter your names in a million times. Let's do um, increments of two. So like two dollars is the minimum. But if you bid four dollars, I'll put you on the wheel twice, six, three times, eight, four times, so on and so forth. So uh, the first one is going to be a big old bag of 5046s. If you want to fly like Drew, you have to fly the props that he used to fly forever. Uh, Drew Camden Ladrib flew these 5046s for fucking ever. These are like unbelievably durable. They have great um, throttle resolution, especially in the mid throttle. Like just think of the way Drew flies, right? Think of like the the smoothness and just the way that that he uses the throttle these props do that he recently got sponsored i believe by gem fan and switched over to their 5143s um but yeah these are awesome i flew these props for a while um the only thing i don't like about these props is they're a little heavy the a lot of the new um 5140s 5143s are like getting very very light these are like the old school props where they're big, they're beefy, they're like damn near indestructible. And um, my God, do they make some power. The, so for example, I flew these props on these 2207, 2400s and they moved that like big fat CL1 rig around like it was a toothpick, man. So these are really good props. It looks like 10, maybe 12 sets in there. So, uh, yeah, Cyclone, Dow Cyclone T, 5046 C's. Get your Super Chats in if you have any interest in winning these. This big old bag of props. This will probably take you about a year to break all these because they're just so stout. Um, they're also a very good cinematic prop because um, they're very smooth and well-balanced. Dow and Gemfan and... The T-Motor props are made by Gemfan. So Dal, Gemfan, T-Motor, those are the most balanced props um, that I've found. So, yeah, awesome cinematic props for you. They'll cover a ton of ground with all that pitch. Burden is in for five effing entries on the wheel. So you guys got some work to do if you want to beat him up. And look at that sticker. Look at that little headband-wearing pair bowing for some reason <laughs> all right somebody get in there somebody get in for two dollars and steal it away from from burden because he so the the reason why i want to do it this way is because um burden is also thomas bird jr and i realized after the stream actually last week that um he i don't know if he did it on purpose or by accident or whatever but he, he did a, a super chat as Burden and then as Thomas Bird to get himself in twice. And I was like, oh, that clever guy. And then I'm like, well, wait, why doesn't... I mean, I should just let everybody do that. Um, so, yeah, everybody can do that now. So, um, that's that. The next set of uh, props for the giveaway is going to be the, uh, the, the ones that you guys have seen a bunch of times. So, those are coming up. Bill McCoy getting in there for $2. Bill McCoy is looking for the upset... I am a big fan of the underdog, so I'm pulling for you, Bill. Still love you, Thomas. You know, you know I'm your boy, man. I'm gonna have to ship you a, a, a I'm gonna have to ship your stuff on a pallet because you won so much stuff. Oh, and and so David Noose throws a, a a monkey wrench in, and does 4.99. So David Noose is getting put on the wheel two and a half times. So, how can I do that? I wonder if you can adjust the um. I wonder if we can adjust the the width of the um, let's see how good this random wheel thing is here. I'll show you guys what I'm doing. See if I can adjust the width. There's all these advanced options. I wonder if I can. Oh, I don't want to screw around with this wheel. Here's the extra wheel that I set up. Oh, 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 oh. This is the other thing. This is the other thing. Okay, so four. People that are on the $30... I knew there was something else Patreon that I wanted to talk about. If you are on the $30 or up tier, you are also going to get entered in these giveaways. You can also do the the super chat to get yourself in here more on the wheel. But I want to like really incentivize the, the people that are willing to put in $30 a month uh, for my insane hair and uh, just random screamings 
to, um, yeah, hook it up. So that's what I did here. I added everybody once that's on the $30 tier. I made, look how prepared I am, guys. I did it, I did two of them because I knew I was going to do two Super Chat giveaways. So, all right, so I got to start typing. So let's get um, Birdman. Thomas, did you get, was, was Birdman like your, was Birdman a negative or a positive nickname for you growing up? I'm sure it was a nickname. So the Birdman is going on here one, two, three, four, five times. And then Bill McCoy is going in here once. He's going to be the underdog that steals it. And then David Noose is going in here twice. And then I will do <laughs> just Noose. <laughs> I can't think of how to do <laughs> rounds up to three. All right. I'm going to give you guys another couple seconds if you want to get in. That's cool. That, that fills up the wheel a lot more. That, that looks a lot better. Um, all right. Awesome. David, you have to do a dollar for the next, um, to get in on the next giveaway. I'll put you in on the next one if you do a dollar. Applying wheel changes. Add Jim seven times. Are you, are you sending $14, Jim? Noose only wants to be in there four times. Wait, what? What are you guys talking about? Seven times, four times? What? Oh, and uh, Noose is up here too. Noose, you're on here three times. Oh, yeah. All right, closing it. I don't know what you guys are talking <laughs> Jim, I don't know what you mean by seven times. I don't see a, um, a super chat from you. Uh, but there's another one coming in case it, it got hung up. I'll look in a second. Uh, spin the wheel. That's it. Stream over. Channel over. Closing the channel up. <laughs> Fuck me. Is that perfect? Bill, how many... All right, so what were the chances on that? Roughly 10%. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. <laughs> ah, that's great. Oh, that's great. Oh, I see. You guys are doing the stickers, and there's probably not a $6 sticker. You don't have to do the stickers, guys. Oh my God, that's the greatest thing ever. Bill McCoy, um, <laughs> send me at Ciotti FPV on Instagram, Facebook, uh, wherever the hell you want, uh, your or, or Patreon, your address, and uh, 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 oh, am I shipping out? Yeah, we'll be fine. Uh, 5146, Dow Cyclone 59, uh, 5146, Noose, yeah, the options end in 99, that's, yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> God, that is perfect. I couldn't have scripted that better. Um, last giveaway of the night. You guys are familiar with these. The old Gem Fan Flash 5149s. If you haven't heard me talk about these props, this is a full set, which is every color. Uh, red, purple, whiskey, which is orange, blue, uh, green, and clear. One of every color. These are... One of my favorite, if not my favorite, high pitch prop for going real fast. I run these on my long range rig with 2407, um, uh, 1700 KV, 6S, and my god, they haul ass. Um, not only do they haul ass, though, one of the big problems I have with high pitch props is they uh, you sacrifice a lot of um, throttle resolution in the middle of the throttle, and somehow these don't do that. These are also lightweight. A lot of the really pitchy props are um, very, very heavy, which is no good. You want as little weight on the rotating assembly as possible. Oh, Kebab has a Mobula 6 review. That's what I'll be watching when I wrap up here. Um, so yeah, six sets of these. Uh, the $30 and up tier folks are already in. I'm giving you guys 60 seconds to get on this one because I just realized it's 1015. Um, we got to wrap this up by... I want to show you guys something on this build. So we'll do 60 seconds and then, 11. um, what? 11? No, no. Earlier than that. Sure? Yeah. 1030 at the latest. 
uh, yeah, so get your um, your super chats and or stickers in. Noose, you're in. Uh, let me put it on the wheel. Here we go. Anybody else that wants in? Again, increments of two dollars. If you want to do six dollars, don't do the sticker. I would. I, I now that I've seen the stickers a bunch, I realize that they're silly. So you guys don't have to do the stickers anymore unless you want to. Um, but, uh, yeah, cool. So we got David in there. Anybody else that wants to get in, you got about another 40 ish seconds. Uh, while, let me do this. I'm going to move the camera right now so that I am ready over on the workbench. Cause I want to show you guys something really cool that I kind of forgot about and had to remind myself of burden getting in with $4. He's getting in there twice. set up here hopefully you guys won't get too nauseous because the camera is just on the little small screen all right this guy here let's get this pointed down a little bit move it on up all right now yeah, we're cooking oh wait no you know what i want to do i want to do my uh I know some of you guys saw me do this last week. I got a cool new little setup that I've been farting around with where I put the camera through the lens of the um, my little magnifying light glass thing. And it works shockingly well. I'm gonna have to hit the, um, I'm gonna have to screw around with the um, focus, but Market zero going for the upset with two dollars. Let's get this focus handled. Sick. Look at that. Look how good that looks. And this is what this is the setup. Like I'm I'm just putting you guys down like here. So good. Shocking. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to start typing these into the wheel. When I'm done typing, I'm going to spin the wheel. So hurry up. If you want to get in, that is. <clears throat> Woo. All right, so David, you were first. And then we got two for Burden. And then we've got Market Zero. I'm never going to call you Market A Zero. I'm always going to call you Market Zero because... Big Lebowski. Here we go. Wait, no, I gotta do it in all caps to get the full impact. There it is. The full, one of, the, one of my favorite lines of all time. Uh, which one's explosive? The uh, the new glides? Um, the glide hammer prototype is on the way. And I picked up some of the glide light uh, body parts. I'm interested to see how they are. And I got a bunch more glide arms, which I needed. Um, yeah, that should be fun. And then I'm not allowed to talk about his other frame. <laughs> Sorry. But you guys have already seen some footage from it, and it's going to be awesome. I think that will do it for this giveaway. We're going to apply the wheel changes and spin this son of a bitch. All right. Here we go. I got like 18 things I got to hit all at once. Oh, this is going to be a challenge. Oh! Ah! I knew I got that <laughs> Burden gets it. Getting those 5149 gem fans. Congrats. Fire me off a little message. I'm pretty sure I have your address. Uh, just remind me that... Uh, well, you know what? I am going to go put them in your box because I'm pretty sure there's a box for you yeah, over here. Box. Yeah, here it is. 
Oh man, he's getting two sets of these. Bird is clearing a house. Look, look at this guy. All right, all right. you guys got to see this. These these thirty dollar guys are are they're fucking killing you non thirty dollar people. Look at this box. The the focus is gonna be jacked up. But these are this is all Thomas. Like here's the ones he just won. There's the ones the uh, from last week. These are the Avan flows from from I guess it was last week as well. And then the, these are the five one three ones. God damn. I need who is, I need somebody else to make a uh, a stream and a Patreon with giveaways so I can start cleaning up like you guys. Damn. <laughs> awesome, brother. Congrats. Get me a well. You don't even need to uh, to remind me. They're in your box already, so you're good to go, brother. Um, explosive fruits, kebabs new frame, the hammer. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to the hammer frame. And and when he gets the six millimeter arms in, I'm gonna get a ton of them. Uh, all right, cool. So that I think. Let me check my little cheat sheet here. I believe we are good to go. But let's just make sure. Where's the live dashboard? There it is. All right, cool. That's good to go. This is all set here. And, oh, oh, oh. You know, I wanted to briefly mention, somebody had asked me about um, finding people to fly with. Uh, if in your area there isn't a Facebook group already that you can find, make one. And when you make it, pick a name that's very boring like like for me so i live in alpharetta right i made a facebook group called alpharetta fpv that helps the seo it helps people find it you know i'm going to start working on this thing and and i'll talk while i uh while i work uh yeah so name it that and then it's going to give you the chance to do tags use the tags do the same thing put the name um all the names of all the towns around you as well so, like, for me, it would be, like, Alpharetta, Duluth, um, Atlanta, you know, just all the towns that are immediately around you. And then in the description, so you only get, like, five tags. Um, in the description, go ham. Like, I'm talking go on Google Maps and look at every single town around you. And in the actual description at the bottom of the... So, you know, just put, like whatever um you know this is a group for fpv pilots in yada 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 to hang out and shoot the shit um but then in the bottom of the description go ballistic put the names of every fucking town around you and that's going to give you the best uh chance of people to actually find you um yeah david noose just called out drone nation that's i haven't used it but apparently it's pretty good as well uh but yeah that i've done that so i've got I'm the admin and creator of at least 15 Facebook groups because I just sort of do that every time. Like every time I'm into a hobby, I just make a group if there's not one like super local to me. And by doing those simple SEO things, people will find it and they'll come hang out and you'll have a blast. So there you go. I wanted to talk about that for like the last three times that I kept forgetting to mention it. Um... Uh, do, 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 do. Oh God, I missed a bunch of stuff. Okay, uh, we talked about the Patreon Patreon only uh, Discord chat night. I can delete that from my little bullets. Uh, live stream reviews is the next bullet. Uh, so let me give you guys a, a quick prep as to oh, Taco Mac Market Zero. Calling out the Taco Mac. I am digging that place. I think we've only been there once or twice, but it was good. Yeah, we got something good there. Yeah. We are very spoiled, though. We we moved here from Charleston, and Charleston's one of the better food towns in the planet. The only thing about Charleston as a food town is it's all American food. <laughs> like, we missed, uh, we missed ethnic food real bad. And what's really cool about here is there is a lot of ethnic food so we're loving that um quick prep on this because i'm gonna try to work on this and talk which you guys probably know how miserable i am what happened with this is it got stuck in the tree it cooked this front motor esc is fine 
for some... Oh, so what happened was I put a... Um, like an idiot, I plugged a battery back into this when I got it down from the tree, and it and it th I didn't notice that the uh, the laminations on the windings up here had completely melted, um, and it threw a big old spark, and I think that is what blew the um, the f so so I plug a battery in, big spark, take it home, take this motor off plug a battery in the ESC boots when you plug in an ESC you get the first three startup tones those initial startup tones are telling you that the ESC is here and it's somewhat okay um, then there was a pause and I didn't get the next two beeps the next two beeps are telling you that the flight controller is communicating with the ESC properly so when I don't get those beeps, I know that there's something going on between the flight, flight controller's connection and the ESC. So for, th for this, it was really easy because they put LEDs on here. I just looked at the flight controller and there were no LEDs on. So that told me, okay, the flight controller is either not getting power or it blew up. So the next thing I checked, so I, I, I made a little plug header here um, and I took the VBAT and ground wires and I put a multimeter on them. So I checked the VBAT out, and the, the VBAT out was working properly. There's also a 5 volt out on here, which was actually not hooked up. So I just checked that just out of curiosity, and that was fine as well. So now we have isolated the fact that the ESC boots properly, sends VBAT out, sends 5 volt out, and there's pretty much no reason for the motor... Um, Technically speaking, if all of the motor wires, like if, if we cut all the motor signal wires, that would also cause us to not get those beeps, but the this would still be, the flight controller would still be getting power in that scenario. So we've, we've eliminated the ESC as the problem. Now we know that the flight controller is the problem. So um, we've multimetered the VBAT and ground wires. So we know that the flight controller is getting VBAT and ground. So we know that at some point, the VBAT is coming in here and nothing is happening. Basically, so the, um, the, the internals on these flight controllers can't run on VBAT. That basically, when VBAT comes into a flight controller, the first thing that happens is it gets uh, crunched down to 5 volts through the 5 volt regulator. So, if this thing is not lighting up the LEDs and we know that the VBAT is going out, immediately we've isolated the problem, right? The 5 volt um, BEC, uh, BEC, has blown up. So, I initially, I, just, I, I wasn't thinking through it, and I desoldered everything, and I took this out, and like right about when I got it to here, I remembered that there's a way to fix this. So, think about the way that the that the current is flowing through this the vbat is coming in it's going to the 5 volt regulator which is right here and then that 5 volt regulator is tied into everything else on this board all right you guys are probably still with me now what that means is so electricity kind of doesn't care for the most part which way it flows to to some extent um if this happens if i put 5 volt into so on this flight controller there are five volt pads those five volt pads are hooked directly up to this five volt bec so what you can actually do is you can run five volt into the five volt pads on a flight controller and a lot of times not always um, a lot of times that will power the entire board because you're kind of just circumventing that bec right you're you're getting 5 volts into the the lines in the board that go everywhere you know there's all there's all different layers in here um, and they're all going to, to different parts and, and different chipsets and, and all over the place so that's exactly what I was able to do Acon because they're awesome and they make the best ESC's and you should just never buy another 5 inch ESC that's not an Acon AK32 they put a 5 volt BEC on their their goddamn um, a 5 volt BEC on their ESC. Jesus Christ. Uh, so all literally all I had to do was desolder or no, all I had to do was unpin. If I'd thought about it soon enough, 
unpin the VBAT, change it one over on the on the ESC because the VBAT is one pin over from the five volt, and then I could have just cut that and put it on the five volt, uh, any one of the five volt pads, and I would have been good to go, and I could have been right back up in the air. But instead, like an asshole, I I got angry and desoldered the whole thing. So now I have to solder it back together. But um, that is a super handy little trick that saved me $32 on a little Talon F7 MPU 6000. Did I'm actually curious, did anybody else know about that? Because I've known about that for a while, but it's never happened to me. And I, I almost forgot. Like, I really almost threw this away. I was very close to just chucking this in the garbage. Um, it doesn't work on all uh, flight controllers, I believe, because some flight controllers will have multiple 5 volt BECs and um, when they do that they have to like put you know one 5 volt back feeds you know like the VTX pad and the and the LED pad or something like that and then the other one will feed you know some other pads or some other chipsets so on those it's it's not as easy um, all right I see some let's hit some you know what it's it's 1030 already screw this build you guys don't need to see me solder wires to the pads. I just told you exactly what I'm going to do. Um, I, you know, I made this. I'm going to put the 5 volt onto one of these 5 volt pads, put the grounds back, um, put it back together, and I'll have my um, 1750 KV 6S rig all back together. Fresh out of the tree, not lost forever. I'm going to hit a couple of these um, questions here, and then... I'm gonna go spend time with the lovely Kristen Siati. <laughs> Wait, no, I don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> oh man, I love me some screaming goats. God damn. Oh, that's my crotch. Hi. I, I, I am truly such a fan of the screaming goats. That is one of my favorite YouTube videos. In the world. Give you guys a different, uh, different little perspective. Get this out of here. I'll use it. Put it over here. Get out of here, kicker light. Oh, these batteries are getting shot. Screw it. Um, Explosive Fruits has a Acrobrat Duo that is 280 grams. On Tattoo 4S850, should I drop the weight is the question. Uh, it depends on the motors, Explosive. Uh, I am at that same weight on mine, but I've got these big old uh, Emac 1606 4000s that just make all the thrust in the world. So this rig feels totally fine. And th this is actually a, a very personal preference kind of question. Um, my Acrobrat is also a fat Crobrat because I have the V1 split with the double board so I've got like a, a four or five gram extra PCB up front and then that's about it that, that's those are really the two things oh and I've got the dual camera set up on it too so I have a bunch of things that make this thing fat um, the the acrobats do fly really good if you get them closer to 250 260 250 um, but the whole point in, in my opinion of, of an acrobrat is that it's fat and, and like that it flies a certain way because of that. Like it has more momentum. It has more mass. It has more throw. Oh, so you're on the 1507. So yeah, you probably have plenty of thrust. I would leave it. Um, I, yeah, I, I just, I think the acrobrat is a very unique, very, um, interesting, build in that it's got that extra weight the only problem with it is it kind of falls out of the sky like a safe when you come off the throttle because for 280 grams three inch props are not that big so it it loses altitude pretty quickly but you can throw it upwards like crazy because you've got those 1507s and you can throw it over stuff like crazy so yeah um that i would leave it man i i'm i am digging the fat grow brat. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Jealous FPV asking about the Flywoo Robo. What? Yo, the micro game is blowing 
the fuck up lately. Let's see what these flywoo robos look like. Look at those silly little things. Thanks for whoever just called out the description. Look at that. So 1202.5 is either a two, is in my opinion, again, either for a two inch, three or four blade prop, or a toothpick style bi-blade um, like the, like the new lightweight three inch bri blade props. Um, <clears throat> and then this motor is going to, you're going to want like a, um, an all up weight sub a hundred probably with a motor like this, uh, looks like a two mil shaft. So that's kind of good. I I'm, uh, I'm very split on the whole two millimeter shaft thing. It's insane that it, that it really limits you on props, but the props that are available with two millimeter shafts are really good. So kind of doesn't matter. Um, I don't know. It, it's so now that I, I realize it's a two millimeter shaft, you actually can't run the, uh, I don't think there are any three or four blade, two inch props that you're going to be able to run. So on a, on a motor like this, you're going to be very limited on props. And I think they're only going to be toothpick props. So yeah, I mean, this is going to be a very specific motor for a toothpick, but that's good. I mean, that, that's what you want. Um, yeah, these will probably be pretty good. I would, uh, jump into kebabs Facebook group and see if anybody in there has tried these out yet. Um, it's something like kebab FP. It just, just go to Facebook and type in kebab FPV and it'll find the, uh, the group. It's just tons of toothpick lovers in there, um, that have lots of good tech. So somebody will probably have flown this looks like 5,800 KV. I think that is the KV where you can run either two or three S. So yeah, looks like a good motor. Um, without flying it there, there's only so much that I can say 3.8 grams. That's pretty good. That's pretty light. Um, 1103s used to be four grams. So yeah, that's really light. That's a good weight. Um, yeah, should be good in theory. See if anybody on Kebab's channel is, uh, smash these around a little bit to see if they hold up. That's what I'm most curious about with, uh, with motors. Uh, one more question. Now we'll do two more. Uh, Ben Watkins says that he wish he could have used uh, an AK-32 on his micro alien build with the Talon F7, but the frame design is crap with the press nuts in the way. So Ben, uh, that's the other thing that I don't like about the, uh, the micro alien, the micro reverb frames. Um, I know why they did it, but that's, you can't put pre like the, the, those two frames smack of a, like they were designed by somebody that builds and flies five inch rigs. So like nobody that builds micros was involved in the design of those frames. I'm just going to say it. Maybe they were, and they were asleep at the wheel, but the, there are a couple things like that that are just like, and with, <laughs> with both of those frames. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's frustrating. Um, last question is going to be, oh, 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 somebody asked me what my favorite 30 by 30 flight controller was, but I think they forgot to, uh, tag at CID FPV. It is the CL racing F7, uh, affiliate link to it. Oh, I forgot to mention the affiliate links. I did miss a bunch of shit tonight. I got to add it here. Hold on. I got to add it. Uh, fill affiliate links. Okay. Uh, affiliate links down below in the description. Uh, they're free money for all of us. The money that I make off of the affiliate links and the Patreon and everything goes right back into this. Uh, so the more times you guys magically remember to use the affiliate links, the more stuff we'll be testing. Cool. And giving away even cooler. Uh, so do me that favor as whenever you can. Uh, I've got the bitly links go to get FPV. Get FPV is my current favorite, uh, stateside shop to order from. Then there are some Amazon ones. The Amazon ones are really slick because it'll do your entire order. I don't know if the get FPV, I, I assume the get FP ones are similar. Um, but if you're doing an Amazon order for anything like antifreeze, <laughs> if you jump into one of my videos and hit any of those Amazon affiliate links, 
you don't have to buy that item. When you hit that link, it puts my little whatever the hell affiliate number into the cookies, and then the whole order, I get like, I think it's like 1% or point something percent um, of it. And yeah, it benefits all of us because we're a fucking team, yo. So that's that. I completely forget what I was talking about before that. Um, oh, yeah, I was just saying the, the link to the uh, CL Racing Up 7. Uh, inside baseball fact, the Talon flight controllers, I just recently learned, are made by CL Racing. And it, what's funny about that is uh, Brad, my buddy up in New Jersey, one of the first flight controllers he bought was a CL Racing F4. Like, almost two years ago and that flight controller has never given him shit it has never died it has always been like just totally rock solid and so have these talons <laughs> these talons have been exactly like that they've just been they're not flashy they're not exciting i mean they're it's a red pcb which is kind of cool but they don't have bells and whistles and all this crazy shit but they work and that's all i give a shit about <laughs> to be honest with you was it you house that did <laughs> I, I couldn't remember who it was, but yeah, somebody did antifreeze, which is, it was like one of the first orders. I was like, oh, look at that, antifreeze, nice. It looks like that, that guy's got a Volkswagen. <laughs> um, all right, last one. Crunk says, why does the Runcam Micro Swift 3 need a full UART for camera control? The Talon F7 only has a camera control pad, which I don't think w w will work with the Runcam UART control. That's annoying. Um, but just do this, put it on the, um, so the, the camera control is not like processor intensive or anything. So just, I would try it on that camera control pad and see, but if that doesn't work, just put it on an led pad and then do, um, soft serial, uh, um, Joshua as well as Oscar Liang both have great how to's on soft serial. I prefer Oscars because it's text based so you can scroll through it. Um, but if you're more a fan of videos, I'm sure Joshua has a, um, a soft serial video, soft serial. If, if you guys don't know what that is, go type soft serial FPV or something into Google and you'll find Oscar's article. It's pretty slick. It, it can get you out of some jams for sure. Um, I think that's going to do it. Patreon do the thing. Uh, there's buttons down here. Do whatever you want with those. Click them, click them again, unclick them, smash them, as the cool kids say. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention. Okay, so check this this idea out. Um, I'm going to do live straight. So, um, like I said earlier, I've been talking to Banggood about maybe doing some reviews on some of their stuff. I would love to also get hooked up with GetFPV. I'm waiting on Hugo to get back to me there. Um I've never done the review thing because it's a pain in the ass to edit. Um, you gotta, it, it just sucks to edit. It, it takes a long time, it's a pain in the ass. Um, but what I realized is I can do live stream reviews. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna schedule a review, I'm gonna schedule a live stream for like Wednesday night at six o'clock, or like Wednesday night at seven o'clock, right? And the name of the live stream is not gonna be anything live stream related, it's gonna be um, uh, micro eagle review video or something like that. And I'm going to make a proper thumbnail, you know, like all the other review guys do. And basically I'm going to come on and I'm going to have, I'm going to have to have my phone with like a, a timer. Cause you guys know me, I'll talk for 16 hours about this shit. Um, I'm going to put like a 10 minute timer on and camera on the bench. We'll look at it camera pointing at me i'll talk about it a little bit and i will have flown it hopefully so I'll, I'll be able to swap over in obs to you know like i do all the time to this guy and play some flight footage and i have a review and then at the end of the review like as i'm doing the review you guys can can put questions in the chat and i can try to blast through those questions as quick as possible and wrap that shit and I'll be able to do like on the fly reviews. And then I, if it's an interesting product, I will more than likely then talk about it on the next stream. Um, I really want to get to the point where they're sending me binded flies because my other like lightning bolt idea 
is I want to do that with Blinded Flies as well, a quick review, but then I also want to do like a two hour stream and have um, and tear down these Binded Flies. One of the reasons why I don't often recommend Binded Flies is they, they're they never all the way right. <laughs> like They never get it quite right. Um, and if we sit here for an hour and tear that thing down to the, to the fucking frame, I will find every single little thing in there that they have not done right, and I will show you how to fix it. So essentially, you'll be able to buy a $120 bind and fly, and I will show you the things that you need to replace to bring that thing up to a, up to spec with a scratch build. And if you haven't totaled up a scratch build, they're way more expensive than the bind and flies. Like if a bind and fly build is 120 bucks for you to scratch build that with like the top tier components, which is why it's more expensive, right? But if you if you actually look at what it costs, you'll be at about like 200 bucks usually to to scratch build that. So yeah, I want to show you guys how to do that because that is how you get into this hobby. You buy a micro brushless and you get up in the air right away. So you have to learn the transmitter. You get your ass in the simulator um, and you do all that to get up in the air with your bind and fly and then you smash it inevitably. And then I've got a video that YouTube, when, when YouTube um, like shows a live stream, it, it shows just like a video, right? Like there, I don't think there'll be any way to differentiate um, the fact that I'm doing a live stream review versus an actual edited review. Um, so yeah, you'll the, you'll have a video of me tearing it down, saying, "Hey, if you're fixing this thing, also replace this, 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 and this, and it's gonna rip." So yeah, man, that's gonna be fun. Uh, this is a LED light a battery powered LED light with a gel. Um, kicker lights always look good when they're gelled. And this gel, this is like me being the cheapest person ever. You can get these uh, Roscoe Lux gel sample packs for, they used to be free, but then people realized you could do this with them. So people would order like a hundred of them. Um, so now they charge, now they're a couple bucks, but you take these guys, you remove the little stupid plastic bastard, you take three of them and you get clear, uh, packing tape and you tape them together and you have a bigger gel that you can drop into an LED light because this, this, to get this gel material, like it's not that expensive if you're just buying one color, but like I want, I made like a dozen of these in, in all different colors, green, blue, purple, red, orange, black, not black because you wouldn't be able to see through it. But, you know, there's a whole spectrum of colors here. So, yeah, I made a whole bunch of uh, free gels for my little LED lights because I'm a goddamn broke genius. <laughs> um, and then that out there, that's uh, those are just regular old Christmas lights around the window that looks out into the parking lot. And then this here is garland with LEDs. And I can't show you guys the Christmas tree, which is around the corner, because the cable on this won't reach long enough. But if you friend me on Instagram, there's probably a picture or two of the Christmas tree. I'm going to get out of here. You guys are awesome. Um, Sagan remembers the, the, the free Roscoe's. I wish I'd gotten more than one. I only got one. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself for those two ideas that they're, they're going to save me a lot of time. Um, do me a favor and don't like spoil that and tell other people. Um, cause I've already, I, I don't know. It, it might just be coincidence, but I've noticed a lot of people have started streaming now. Um, two months ago, nobody was really streaming other than DJ. Uh, and not like that anymore. So yeah, it'll, I mean, people will find out about it as soon as I do it the first time, but whatever. Uh, don't forget the frame Mongo says frame. What frame? The frame reminder. Number three. Can you see my reminders? <laughs>
<laughs> you can't see my reminders. Oh, it does say streamed X hours ago. That's true, Explosive. Yeah, other than that, uh, and I'm, I'm sure nobody will know that. Cool. Uh, Mongo, well, the, the delay, hurry up so that Mongo can hear me asking him what he means. Um, you guys have an awesome weekend. I'll be back on Sunday at 3 o'clock, 3 to 5, after Joshua. Or is it 5? Whatever. You guys know what time it is. Uh, after Joshua on Sunday, after Joshua on Monday. Uh, Monday will be what? Discord on Wednesday. Monday will be another giveaway. Uh, there aren't many people in here. I'll, uh, I'll spoil it. I'm going to start doing this. So there's, so the, your prize for staying till the bitter end. <laughs> Dark is streaming, <laughs> streaming himself, watching, uh, <laughs> watching this stream. All right. Yeah. You guys get the, um, you guys get the inside scoop. So next week, what do we do? Oh, uh, every party has a pooper. <laughs> Next week, the five-inch uh, giveaway is going to be an X hover frame, a hundred-plus-dollar X hover frame with the TPU, the micro brushless giveaway is going to be a. Micro Swift 3 camera and the Tiny Whoop toothpick giveaway because I'm sure the stuff from Kebab isn't going to come in time is going to be this hysterical little box that I put together of just like the weirdest, wildest, most fun little Tiny Whoop <laughs> shit. This is a, uh, a 7 millimeter. This is actually a really stiff frame. This is the only frame that uses the same stiff, indestructible plastic as the cockroach frames. Um, and it's for seven millimeter brushless motors. If you haven't built a seven millimeter brushless, I'm sorry, brushed whoop, it has all the power of a brushless whoop, but all like the nostalgia of a, of a brushed whoop. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, brushless whoop frame from Beta FPV, a bunch of camera mounts. Um, there's like a bunch of motors in here, a couple canopies, shitload of props. Look at all these props. Ooh. Look at all those props. Look at all those tasty props. Ooh. Um, there are four six millimeter rando motors because with brush motors, they burn out at random and then you get stuck with extras. And then here's a set of seven millimeter motors. Seven millimeter by 16, 17, five KV. So yeah, this is actually a cool little box to, uh, to get a, a couple of whoops going. So now you guys know what next week holds because all 28 of you were cool enough to hang around till the end. And I appreciate that. You guys are awesome. I don't have a duo frame yet, David, but one of our awesome patrons in here sent me one, uh, which will be here on Monday. So Monday night stream, I will have a... Um, a uh, a duo frame to, to show off to you guys. Wait, what am I doing? I don't want to put these in here. Which is super awesome. And I'm very, very excited about. So, that about does it. I'm going to go relax. You guys should too. Uh, lots of cool shit coming up. Kick me in my ass as much as you guys can. Um, uh, for anybody that saw the five minute stream uh, Monday of this week. You got a little bit of a window into what I've been dealing with for the majority of my life and what I will have to continue to deal with, unfortunately. Um, if you want to learn anything about mental illness, depression specifically, anxiety specifically, uh, I have made a Facebook group called FPV Therapy. Go on in there. One in 10 people has mental illness. Um, and I believe a lot more actually have it but are not diagnosed um my guess is it's closer to 50 percent of people actually have it and it's just not diagnosed so yeah man if you want to learn more about it jump into that facebook group there's some awesome people some super courageous folks in there that are sharing their stories um we're working on getting 
our own like helpline basically set up. Um, we're gonna do like a Google Voice number that um, I think we can have it forward to multiple cell phones. So essentially, if somebody's in a bad place or just needs to talk to somebody, they're gonna be able to hit this Google Voice number. It'll ring to, uh, I think there's three of us right now uh, that are willing to be operators. And uh, yeah, they'll ring to us and we can talk them down, hang out with them, do whatever is needed. Um, Cause it's hard, man. It's uh, it's real hard. I'm a stubborn motherfucker. I am. Uh, I push pretty hard in life, and I got nothing on it. It's um, it it does what it wants. When it when it wants to kick my ass, I'm along for the ride. And uh, I've been doing everything I possibly can for it not to happen like that. And it just is. It's it's just. It just has a seemingly infinite amount of power. So learning about it is key. Um, it's very misunderstood. So yeah, if, if you guys have any interest, hit that group. There's also a lot of people in FPVs who do have... Yeah, there are a ton of people in FPV that have it. Um, this hobby is very like adrenaline dump driven and very technical and very busy. Uh, and those are all things that are very attractive to people who have brains that won't shut the fuck up, basically, or, or behave. Um, so yeah, get on in there. It's called FPV Therapy. If you have any interest, uh, super cool group of people. And I want to make that a thing. I, I really do. Um, yeah. That's all I got on my bullet list. The, the, the other thing I have on my bullets is still photography. I'm going to try to do more still photography this year. Uh, Mongo says, keep those claws sharp. Goddamn right. You guys have an excellent night. Uh, get out and fly tomorrow. Everybody go fly tomorrow. Even if it's raining, find a parking garage. Um, I flew in the parking garage for the first time, like, ever. And it's a blast. Like, you don't have to do anything. Just, like, just going through the parking garage is so fun. Because it's like the, the, the trench run in Star Wars. There's just shit flying by it. And do it. It's awesome. Fly tomorrow. All you guys fly tomorrow, or I'll kill you. I'll come to your house and cut your arms and legs off and light the house on fire. All right, guys. Be good. Um, I'm out. Later.